right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Oh, why am I out of focus here now? Jeez, we came into the studio this morning. I don't know what the <laughs> hell happened over the weekend, but the whole place is like in... It's in turvy. Yeah, it's chaos in here. I don't know what the monsters got in here and we're like, oh, let's fiddle with all the sound. Let's play with everything. Let's make it all sound stupid and crazy. Uh, so Leanne is here. Yes, I am. Hi, Hello. Leanne. Very good. And Ryan is here. I'm here. Yes, Ryan's yes. last week on the job before he goes off to Ireland to yes. get drunk. Yes. I thought yes. you were already there for some reason. Oh, no, not and yet. And I hadn't said goodbye. Not yet. So I, still have, I still have some things to do here. I've won. This is my final What week. do you still got to do? What, do you, what are your agenda points? What so, do you still have to achieve before you leave? Um, I just got to wrap up everything. Got to make sure you have a replacement. Gonna, I have a replacement. You have a replacement for me. Ah, no. oh, he will be. Uh, so they're replacing me, Prince. No, 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 no. What? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Does we, your card still work? We have a replacement for you, which I'll be introducing be on careful. the show today. You have to be careful when you say these things around radio people. Like, if oh, very yeah, no, of course. Oh, and yeah. I forgot it's that kind of time now, isn't it? <laughs> Contracts and everything. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, in about. What is it? A couple of no it's end April of Fools, end, end of March. Yeah, end of March. You'll see a whole lot of radio people being fired. Mm. It's always hilarious to watch from the outside. Some have to be frog marched out oh, by security. Uh, is is it one of those things where do people make up other excuses, or is it like do radio people just know like if they're walking out the building, it's like mm. no. You see, the, the point is you can get fired for anything on radio, and often you will be, and it mm. it, it doesn't even make sense half the time. You could have delivered great ratings you could be bringing in the advertising money and they still fire you it sure. doesn't make sense so you've got such stupid people in management i mean properly cretinous bottom feeding <laughs> cave dwelling <laughs> hardly even bipedal i mean they mostly walk <laughs> when no one's looking management walk around on all fours in radio they're the, they're the worst people you'll ever meet anyway i don't want to talk about that I just got back from the loveliest weekend away. Oh, you just like those. An, it's so good. You just, now, well, I was invited along. It's like a family. It was like a family stroke extended family little holiday. There were only five of us. So my sister and her boyfriend and two of my cousins. And we went along to the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. What? Absolutely. I think it's prettier than anywhere I've ever been overseas. That's awesome. Right here in South Africa. Did you drive there, fly there? I'm trying to guess. Pumalanga. So we drove. Uh, we drove. But I mean, let me tell you, there's some driving on those roads in some of those little Pumalanga towns. I mean, there's no, there's, there's more pothole than road in some of them. In the small ones, yeah. But the, mm. but the, the actual road out of Joburg into Pumalanga is pretty damn good. Uh, yeah, no, no, the N4, the yes. highway is excellent. It's amazing. It's highway is great. Better than when, yeah. As soon as you get off that highway, though, I mean, if you <laughs> don't have a 4x4, four four, you're in big trouble. Big trouble. So, um, <coughs> oh, bless you. <coughs> you're okay, then. Yeah, I'm just getting the, the city back into me. You can I was going to say, did you, did you pick so, something up while you were there? So, there are these, these beautiful little streams that come out of the mountains. Mm. And that flow over these rocks, uh, a slate that is patterned. I mean, it just looks absolutely beautiful all the time. Mm. It does. You don't know you weren't there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm realizing why you had such a quiet and, weekend. And 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 maidenhair ferns growing out of the banks, and and crystal clear water. Mm. And waterfalls. And I mean, it, it sounds like I'm describing a magical faraway land, but it's here. Mm. And the reason it still looks as beautiful as this is because it is so remote. I mean, to get there is, is a, a mission. Dirt roads that go on and on and on for, you know, 30, 40 kilometers before you even find the place. Sure. And then when you get there, it is unspoiled and perfect. You can drink the water from the stream. Sure. It's magnificent. It was cold and wet on the day we arrived on Friday. Mm. And then Saturday was the most beautiful day. I mean, I've got, have I got a Dutchman tan for oh, you? Oh, dear. It ends about, <laughs> it ends just under the sleeve, the short sleeve. 
<laughs> and then everything else is uh, white as hell underneath, but I'm red on my arms, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, a sure sign that you had a good holiday. And it was a holiday. I was really only there for a day and two nights. Mm. But how lovely. And just being with, you know, family and you don't have to make a, you, you, don't, you don't feel like there's pressure to entertain each other or any of that stuff. My one cousin does fly fishing, so he did some of that. And catch and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all catch and release. Yeah, yeah, but you don't, you don't, you know, eat take, it like a yeah. savage, oh, no, <laughs> like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And it's just reminded me again, like this country, this continent is fantastic. Mm. It really is the most beautiful place in the world, in the universe. Human beings cannot do better than to be here, and why it's so important again for us to look after the place because i live on a river at home mm. it's just but it's shit it's an open sewer yeah and i see these rivers and i thought wow if the river in front of me was only if it was as beautiful as this if people do, didn't throw their their rubbish and their litter and their turds and their babies into it <laughs> old babies not well, just I, the nephews. I, I mean i wouldn't put it past whoever's upstream from me because mm. my god it just it's like it's the worst most polluted river in the country and then i compare it to that one i think if this if my river in front of me looked like this it would be paradise yeah you know property values would go up people would take pride in their environment they would they would be they would spend more time outdoors enjoy the the beauty of this yeah. place one of the few things we've got in south africa because all the things that require humans to to work don't all the things that require government to work don't mm. but all the things that don't require government they manage themselves and if it's small communities doing their thing you know it, it makes me really proud to see places like this that are so beautiful but of course it takes a lot of very very hard working and smart people and usually people with quite a lot of money to make a place nice yeah and then the fucking poor come along and ruin everything <laughs> oh my god wow Oh, well, I'm glad you're feeling so positive. <laughs> really, that's that's quite uplifting. Because, I am. I'm yeah. feeling super positive at the moment. And I'm excited about what this year holds in store for us. Because I think, you know, apart from the elections and all the obvious things, like people are just holding back at the moment. There's this, I'm not going to throw all in yet. Mm. Let's see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen, mm. right? Right. So we, we're we're all waiting for something to happen. It's like we're... We're sitting on tenterhooks. Just, or we're waiting for nothing to happen. No, well, that's, maybe, maybe that's, nothing. That's the but, other thing. But I think it's this year that it's going to happen. So oh, how exciting. Um, Congo Chris making us feel good this morning. Uh, sorry to be a Debbie Downer, but yesterday marked two years of the war in Ukraine. Worth mentioning, lest we forget. I'm glad you brought it up, but it is depressing. It's not exactly what we'd all regard as the most fun thing to talk about. But, I mean, there are wars going on all over the planet at the moment. The two big ones that we're all involved in, whether we like it or not. And the other nice thing about being away with, um, with family is that you, you sit and you talk about actually important things. You, know, you don't get into the politics and stuff. You actually talk about each other, what everybody's doing, mm. where everybody's going, what's working for them what isn't what they want to do this year what things they've got planned that's cool yeah that's very I cool i saw something this weekend um there's a, a guy and his three friends yes they have something called a wednesday waffle um wow and what that is is basically making a short video on your phone of yourself explaining what you're up to what you're doing at work oh, yeah? how your family is a quick catch up and then yeah. they all share their videos on the group once a week. And it just means so much more than looking at someone's Instagram or looking at someone's Especially with people you Facebook. care about, right? Yeah. And it's so much better than just a quick rushed call. So you, you watch these videos in your own time, yeah, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So you're not phoning someone to say, how are you? Phoning to catch up. And that person hasn't. They're too busy they, doing they're, stuff. They're in between meetings. They're yeah. about to pick up the kids from school. They're rushing around. They've got to do the grocery shopping. They've got to go and hit the, the gym, work, whatever it is. They don't have time to give you an update on their lives. In fact, the worst thing you could do to someone like me is call up and go, just calling to exactly. check in how you are. You're like, 
you're not going to be in the right mindset. Whereas no. this weekend, you may have been sitting there and thought, well, now's a good time for me yeah, to record say. Record a little video. What's going on in my life? And also just how important it is to see each other. Well, can I tell you what physically. was nice? Like the, the other thing I loved, because mm-hmm. there's so many things I loved about this weekend. And it, again, just proves, you know, um, you don't necessarily need to go far and you don't necessarily need to spend a whole lot of money and you don't necessarily need to uh, plan it for months in advance. This was something that just happened. The other thing that made it amazing, no cell phone signal. Ooh, and that's right. kind of why the place is unspoiled too, because all the shit only comes where there's a signal. So I switched this thing off, off on Friday at lunchtime, off. Ooh. Only came on again mm. Sunday, 2 p.m. This, this is what some PA does. Do you know this? I think that's so clever if she's doing it on When her she own. walks out of here, Good. out of Cliff Central, her phone is off. You cannot contact her until she walks in this building. That's the next morning. Very clever. I mean, <laughs> it's a problem if there's an emergency. Yeah. Of course. We, we had su- such an emergency not so long ago. Yeah. But I think you've got to make time where it's just you and 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 you're actually around the people you're around without worrying about what conversations you're not having online. Mm. I'm not good at that. I, I really, I, I think <laughs> sometimes in my, like most lucid moments, I'm like, well, I've, I've got a handle on this, this phone thing. But it took me like an hour of knowing that my phone wasn't on and that I wasn't contactable. There's just no, there is no Ooh, signal. You could drive, drive around these valleys and up these hills. There's no signal at all there. Nothing. There's no Wi-Fi in the house. Nothing. There isn't a TV. See, that, that makes me so anxious. It, it, but that's what you got to get over. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. it just takes a while. I mean, because also just like doing my job, being a producer, you kind of have to know what's going on all the time so you can... Be ready for. Yeah, but we say that. Okay, things. but Ryan, we say that to ourselves, and everybody thinks, "Oh, I, I need to know what's going on." What, what, what are you, the Pope? You'll get, <laughs> you'll get here on Monday morning. You'll figure it out. No, what, of course. You know, so whatever's happened will have happened without you knowing. No, of course. I mean, some people wait for years. If you think back to um, many hundreds of years ago, would wait for years to find out that this spouse had died. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and and. I have to say, just you've got to do this, even if, even if you just stay at home this coming weekend and you switch off your phone and you don't take any of that negative shit in. Mm. Just try it for a day. I mean, I know we've got Dr. Hanan coming. I'm not trying to take his place here. But, <laughs> but really, it's so healthy. And you be outside and, and, and without bloody shoes on. You know, the hippies will say to you, oh, you've you got to earth yourself. I don't believe in that. But taking off your shoes, being in the sun, uh, drinking water out of a, 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 a clean, natural, bloody stream, and eating food that you're cooking yourself. I mean, these are things that you can do, except for the stream one, obviously. But, you know, you, our taps are mostly, it's, it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, for now, I'm saying it's a safe thing to do. Drink water. Just a, I'm not trying to tell you to change your life, but for one day every month, we should all try and just disconnect. Yeah. Because I honestly cannot tell you how it's recharged the batteries. Mm. See, this is, this is, and you're going to hate this because this is where I say I grew up camping as a child. No, no, no. I get that. And so I, I remember when my parents used to take us to all the different, uh, we belonged to like a caravan club. And so every would go once a month with a whole club of Don't people. Don't worry, my sister-in-law used to do this too. We looked down yeah. on her. As- <laughs> <laughs> and it was so much fun. I mean, I used to hate the Sunday school. I used to take a chair in my Bible and walk and pretend like I got lost so I didn't have to go. <laughs> but other than that, um, it was a lot of fun because we got to just, you also had independence that you could just, again, no fun. Oh, it's and great. You could like ride around and make friends with people and go to the shops and things like that. Like It was so much fun. That's how we grew up. Yeah. And then, and then the world happened. You grew up in a caravan? <laughs> no, I mean, not having access to phones and just riding on your bicycle and yeah. making friends. We did that every day. But um, I, I was stuck at a property that I'm selling for four hours uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. And eventually my phone battery died. And I was just in my car, in my old garden. And 
um, listening to the radio because that's all I had access the to. The radio? Yeah. Wireless. Yeah. And my battery died and I had absolutely nothing to do but sit there. And? I, I reclined my chair in my car. I had a nap in the sun. You had a doo doos. <laughs> you had little doo doos in the sun. You see, that's that's also good. And yeah, it is. And I was panicking at first. I kept messaging my brother and saying, four percent left, three percent left, um, just to let you know where I am. And then eventually the panic kind of subsides, and you just start relaxing. And then I was listening to the birds, and yeah. Just Wait, just but, but for how long? Four hours. Four hours. You had no 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 phone battery, nothing. Mm. Sure. We're driving around in this <clears throat> in this open like game vehicle type thing, and this is at night on Friday night to go to the the top of this hill just to look at the stars because the air is so clear and the and there was so little cloud, even though it was a full moon, you could see stars that I haven't seen before. And on the way there, this big, beautiful, magnificent kudu bull. Mm. with these enormous bloody horns was standing in the middle of the road. And you also suddenly realize like that that's going to happen with or without humans, with or without your cell phone signal, with or without the news or the war in Ukraine or whatever else. And while these things should be part of our day-to-day -day existence, it is an extremely good thing to just disconnect from it and to lie in your car when your battery dies. Yeah. And mm. have, a, have a rest because you're tired. And and not have this beep 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 the whole time. That's, just yeah. do it. I mean, I mean that's it, what made it flat in the first place. It's like a walking billboard. Just do it. And 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 being you know a positive and optimistic person, which I am ninety percent of the time anyway. It's not very difficult when you're not connected to the news. Mm. The internet is both a blessing and a curse. Yes. Um, and we've we've still got to figure out because humans take a long time. You know we, we're apes, and we only climb down from the trees in a very short space of time, in all of geological time, the tiniest fraction of it is when we came along. And now we think we can just, oh no, well, we'll, we'll just get used to space travel and we'll just get used to flying. A hundred, 110 years ago, we weren't even flying in planes. We hadn't even learned how to fly. SA, isn't it SAA's 95th or 94th birthday or something? Something like that. Yeah. Well, whatever's left of SAA. Yeah. But, we're now expecting to just, well, let's just get in this pod and travel to Mars. It takes us a while to get into these things. Oh. We're, we're not as good as we think we are at adapting. And most people are not adapting very fast. So give yourself a, a break. Like, you know, take a, take a time out every now and then. Mm. It's, that, it's that pressure of seeing an article saying if you aren't using these AI tools uh, then, you know, you're, you're going to fail in your business. Well, I mean, we, <laughs> yeah, precisely. We've seen how Google AI, what's the thing called? Um, Gemini. Oh, my God. This Gemini mm. is such a fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> they, just, they just don't know why mm. people exist. If they were listening to the show now and generating AI images of us, there'd be empty space. I experienced <laughs> it myself without even knowing it was what it is. What? So I, I was in the office on. Imagine the kind of people who program that. Just what kind of assholes yeah. they are. I was in the office on Friday and. We were working on a video. We needed to create a really nice thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And it took the, the black sales lady in the background at this beauty counter. It took her face and blurred it out completely. Wow. And putting these two tiny little eyes close to each other and, and just a little mouth. It, was, it changed her into something from space. We got a long way. It didn't way. recognize her. Tell you something, we've got a long way to go with this AI. It's still Ooh. not as clever as it thinks it is. I'm or sorry. as most of the creators of it think they. And it's not regulated made. and no. all of that stuff. Uh, so apparently uh, a pimp stopped traffic on Spaghetti Junction so he could misappropriate our helicopter for a ride to the white elephant. What are you talking about? Jeez. Oh, wait. I know what this is. This is about the ANC on, on Saturday in Durban. Yeah. Now, again, I'm really glad. I didn't have to see that. For example, they had their big NC uh, manifesto, launch. Uh, manifesto launch. And it was a big thing for the A. I mean, Fikilim Balula had a hard on all the last week. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like uh, 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 about this rally of his. Anyway, so Mapelo says it looked like the whole unemployed population was there. The traffic was insane. Well, you offer people who have nothing lunch. And a T-shirt 
and it will come. And you'll be told when you're there that you're guaranteed of a job. Sure, lied to, basically. Mm. So my parents took a trip down to KZN this weekend. And they bad timing. I know, but they didn't. They just it was like a kind of last minute thing, and so they called me on Friday, and they were like, "Ryan, is something happening in KZN because the roads are so full, and mm. every stop you cannot like." So this where you knew the news, so you could say, to "And them, I was like, I know what's going on, mom and dad." The manifesto launched this right. weekend. I love the way your parents go away for a weekend when they're only going to see you for another couple of days before you go <laughs> away. They're like, "Ah, we'll see him when he gets back." <laughs> no, they they. They just went there this weekend because I think my dad, my dad went to, um, he picked up a car over there. He found a, a dealership okay. over there. But he, they didn't look at what was happening before. So they called me. They were like, Ryan, there's something wrong because there's so many cars here. Like, what's mm. going on? I was like, no, it's the manifesto Well, if, if anybody went to the ANC's manifesto launch, I mean, first of all, I have to question your IQ. But if you did, tell us about it. Yeah. Get James in here. We need to. Uh, right. So we're going to bring in uh, our new producer, James. Well, he's been learning from the, the ropes from Ryan over the last couple of days we get him in here and we're going to throw him into the the the, the boiling Ooh. depths of hell no well we, we're going to immediately give him a baptism of fire yes, yes. Um, by making him do the sport this morning <gasps> oh no you're kidding no we yeah, are yeah. No. which you've done and ryan's done yes and it's not easy no but he actually so so the the, the advantage here is that james does know something about sport right yes so uh james was a fellow producer on uh, the MKT show back in the day. That, and was, that was with Mbolelo. With Mbolelo, yeah, yeah. On, okay. when it was on Cliff Central. Yeah. And so he will be coming here shortly. But he will be, uh, we thought we'll, we'll just, uh, you know, throw him in the deep end with the sport this morning. Right. So here he is, Garrett. This, this is, I don't know if you've seen him around often this week. I, I, I recognize him. <laughs> I think I know who this is. I think is. I saw him earlier this morning. <laughs> Switch on your camera. Yeah, put, put, put your camera on there, You're not going to be let's, anonymous uh, forever. Let's, uh, yes. Okay, there's James. All right, so this is producer James, That's everybody. producer James. That's him. <laughs> Look, getting nice and close to the camera so you can see him in all, all his glory. Vocals, huh? Yeah. How are you doing this morning? I'm awesome. It's How do you day. like this waking up early? Um, it's tough. It's tough. I'm not a morning person at all. Are you um, miserable? Uh, no, actually, surprisingly not. <laughs> surprisingly not. Uh, making it through. Um, got to go to bed earlier, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You'll get used to that. Mm, You'll I get can't... used to how horrible it feels, right? Yeah, and it's, I mean, still, I was in bed early and I didn't sleep until about. Also, three use that this use morning. that microphone properly. I got to yeah. use it to you, my face. You got to you got to bring it down like direction. So. There we go. Right, right, there, we there go. you go. Did I win? Wow. Okay, I baby so. steps of this guy. He's obviously <laughs> new to this. <laughs> Sure. Leanne, this is going to be a hell of an oh, uphill no. battle. Wow. <laughs> oh, don't fuck up the sport. All right, let's get into it. Let's see what's going on here. This is his great debut. This oh, is no. our, our new uh, producer. Um, this is producer James. And he is going to give us the sport this morning. So we're going to look at all the things that Ben told us about on Friday. And he's going to give us some results. So go ahead. No pressure. Right. So I thought we'd start with the Premier League because what a day to make a debut on the show. Okay. The day after my team wins a trophy against, of all teams, it's Ryan's team. Uh, Liverpool won the Carabao Cup yesterday. You're a um, Liverpool guy? I am. I know, right? I am. And I'm proud about it, Gareth. This is getting worse and worse. I'm, I'm sorry very about proud. this, Gareth. I'm really Yo, sorry. I know. What have you done to us, Ryan? What's You've that? left Not us with this lummox. <laughs> 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 All uh, right, so Liverpool won. Let me Liverpool not interrupt you. Go beat on. Chelsea, Jurgen Klopp lifted his eighth major trophy uh, with Liverpool as they claimed a narrow 1 0 victory over Chelsea in the Carabao Cup this weekend. Uh, sticking with football uh, in the Premier League this weekend, Arsenal secured a comfortable 4 1 victory over Newcastle. Uh, Manchester City edged out Bournemouth 1 0. Mm -hmm. Aston Villa enjoyed a thrilling 4 2 win against Nottingham Forest. Um, and the current standings on the log Liverpool first. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, followed by City with 59 points and Arsenal in third. Then we have the rugby. Six Nations happened this weekend also. Uh, France and Italy played each other to a 13-13 draw. Scotland stunned England with a convincing 30-21 victory at Twickenham. And Ireland beat Wales 31-7. Uh, Six-point different advantage with two matches to go. And then in the Nedbank Cup, more football, uh, major upsets in the Nedbank Cup as Kaiser Chiefs were knocked out by lower league side Milford City FC. And that's the sports wrap.
Very good. Did Very I get good? Nice. Well Is that okay. That was, uh, we'll let the audience be the decider on oh, this. Huge oh. improvement. So a couple of Thank comments you. here because people Let's like to climb in. So <laughs> JP says by day 10, producer James will have a beard like producer Ryan. Oh, wow. stress. <laughs> That's fair. That seems to be a thing for yeah. the beard. Um, so now everything is James's fault. Can we start blaming him, says Slippery true. Pickle? That's true. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, good. That's I'll it. take it. Huge reaction says uh, James is definitely easier on the eye than producer Ryan. That's not very nice. Yeah, that's but he horrible. isn't as wow. smart though. I'll okay. I'll take that all day. Right. Okay. Uh, sure. That's. I'll tough. take intellect. That's I'll take tough. intellect. Okay. Very good. Um, <laughs> and then a couple of people are uh, James sucks. Boo! Get off the mic. <laughs> sure. There we go. That's okay. where the hatred starts. To all right. This is it. This Zanella is it. says, called Liverpool, not Liverpool. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Finally, a Liverpool fan, says Patrick. Sure, it really is a baptism of, baptism of fire, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's uh, what don't worry. No, you'll get used to I'll it. Get there. It'll, I'll get there. Yeah, it'll, it'll hurt less. I mean, <laughs> he didn't have the strongest debut. I did put him on. Uh, his first mission was to record <laughs> the Leanne... Manus interview. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. there was a bit of a, a, a bit of a coughing session. There was. Actually, there. it was very embarrassing, um, as what we did is we had <laughs> we had Leanne Manus in here and I was interviewing her and, yeah. and this guy started having a, <laughs> a coughing, coughing fit. <laughs> While I'm busy talking to Leanne Manus, I'm like, excuse, I'm so sorry. I this said, is Jay. very unprofessional. Uh, it happens. It happens to me often. I was I was so honored to be sitting there doing this interview in the same room with with these two people, and then mm. I ruined everything. Yeah, you did. Everything. You, did. Whole you did. But it's okay because it came out now, really well. Speaking of famous Leans, look at this. Look at what we found. What we found, oh, no. we found, no. we found things on the internet. Look at this. Yes. Hi, this is Channel Twenty YOF, and I'm Leanne Mole. I think South Africa's greatest achievement over the last 20 years has been um, being in, in the presence of someone as great as Nelson Mandela and being able to bear witness oh. to what we've all <laughs> called Madiba magic. And that's something we should never forget. Oh, wow. All right. There she is. That's Leanne Moore. <laughs> Have you noticed how much smaller my boobs are? Well, what was this for? Because this looks like 1993. Seven. I think <laughs> I was living in uh, McGregor at the time. Oh, I'm sure that's. Did they when... come down there with a camera crew? Yes, <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they came to dig you no, out of your. It was rural one of the pleasure. Cape radio stations. They oh. did a taking over heart. It was heart. Oh, shame. Okay. FM. They did a taking over McGregor thing, and oh. they had me read the news because you were the only famous person in McGregor. Uh, there was someone else as well, but we won't mention him. Um, and they had me do the news, and um, oh, then they did a whole oh. thing on legacy. I think it was that. Well, here's another thing that we need you to reprise <clears throat> yes. this morning. So we, we've been scouring the internet for old Leanne mm. Mole clips. Oh, God. All right. Yeah, I know it's, it's a horrible <laughs> thing to see, right? What is that? That was a song that my friend and I made up in high school when we were on the hockey team. I hit the ball. Oh, wow. Still did. All right. James, you, James, you can get out of here. Yeah, that's wild. Wild. Oh, thanks, yeah. thanks. I'm looking thanks. at you. So that's the kind of stuff that lives on, on the internet. It's, that's what, right. that's going to be there when I die. Well, that's beautiful. I think that's very sweet. <laughs> You know, this is the kind of stuff that one day when they put together a package, you mentioned Madiba, when they put together a package on the great Leanne Mole, then these clips will be the ones that they go for. Yeah. Oh, great. Hockey, yeah. hockey songs. Fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> what a legacy. I love how, to know how you came up with that song. It's <laughs> from my brain. <laughs> That's very, she's very what clear. happened? She's very creative. All right. Very good. Uh, that clip has worse production than Microsoft PowerPoint, says Chris. <laughs> Yeah, but it was 1999 or something. Who knows? All right, that doesn't look like ass at all. What do you mean? Look at that young ass, says Pumlai. <laughs> That's right. Your boobs weren't bigger. They were just more north-facing. <laughs> <laughs> so Max Sony says, oh, man, I'm going back in time to marry Lee Ass. Yeah, uh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Very good. All right. Uh, apparently, uh, so we've got a couple of other things that we need to get to before we talk to Dr. Hanan this morning. And we've also got some guests joining us a little later on, which I think you'll have lots of fun with. Um, what did you want to 
tell us about this new thing you've discovered. You've, you've started following a new account. Yes. Yeah, so there's actually something producer James is uh, telling me about. So we yes. were sitting at, uh, he was on his phone and he was scrolling through and there's this account on Instagram called Overheard Johannesburg. Oh. And so I don't know if you guys know, like there's another account called Confessions where you can randomly go confess yeah. things. Yeah, and they're everything. terrific. I love Which that. is hilarious. Mm -hmm. So this account, you submit if you overhear conversations in Johannesburg oh. and like what funny ones there are. Excellent. And I spent the whole weekend just going through every post and I thought it was so funny. So I've brought some examples here for you that I thought you'd like to see. So okay, like, let's take a look. Here's the first one. Uh, overheard at Pure Fitness Edenvale. So I'm going to do a little bit of an Edenvale accent here. <laughs> Whenever I go out with my friends, they all do coke. Person two says, yeah, because it gives you a rush like when you hit a vape. <laughs> <laughs> next oh lordy here's the next one you do this one as mac makeup consultant do you want waterproof or normal customer i don't need waterproof i cry on the inside like a winner <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good next <laughs> overheard from a joe burger visiting cape town nothing gets captainians wet like a farmer's market <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's so embarrassing. That's great. All right, next. Uh, there's this one. This is good. I'm going to follow this. I've heard Over it at the roadblock on Bayers. The cop says, You look like somebody that I know. The driver says, Is he a good looking oak? The cop says, No, 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 no. <laughs> Very good. That's the examples of what I love it. I just what a think clever thing. We must have the most funny conversations in Joburg. I don't know what it's like in Cape Town, but in Joburg, there are definitely some unique conversations that go on. Well, around. this is a good account to follow. Okay. Someone's being creative there as yeah, well. Yeah, I like Very that. Good. But there, there's also something that I've seen where uh, people will be at a restaurant and they overhear maybe a group of girls at another table chatting badly about their friend who's not there. Yes. And then that person will go on to TikTok and say, listen, if you live in blah, blah, and your friend's <gasps> names are Susan and oh. Monique, this is what they said about you. They're being bitches behind <laughs> your back. Wow. That's good. I like that. I remember once, not so long ago, went to a restaurant and I, I observed the unhappiest table of all time. Oh, yeah. It was like this table of really hot girls. They were all looking awesome. Like made up to the nines, tight little dresses, you know, titties out, everything. It was a, it was a good it was a good look at that table. About six or seven of these these ladies, They're all sitting at this table, and none of them were talking to each other. Mm. They were doing this, scrolling selfies, just, scroll, just ignoring everybody. They weren't, they, weren't the talking, they weren't talking to each other. I thought. Oh, this is sure. where they need it. And they need a man at that table to start complimenting them. So they start listening, they start talking to each other. You needed a catalyst. You see, they'd taken either get ready with me's or they were a photograph of their outfit of the night. They weren't even taking pictures and they were of looking, each other, though. No, they were done it earlier oh, that night. Oh, and now they were mm. looking at feedback. All right. Mm. I just, what a life. Yeah, Ted is, is just correcting me here. It says that Edenvale accent was actually more like a four ways boot accent. So, yes. It's hard for me to tell sometimes which one is which. I'm pretty good with it's accents. It's becoming quite mixed, I must say. It's very mixed. You know, I've I'm I now work in four ways, but quite close to Danefern, so deep right in there. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm being exposed more and more, and the accents are starting to overlap a bit. Mm. I mean, in my office, we've got people who were originally from Benoni or from the um, south, like you, the south, the like south. me. And now it's becoming a little bit more difficult to tell. I think we're losing our uh, <laughs> our borders a bit. Oh, really? It's, oh, man. Uh, Slippery Pickle points out this is a good, very, very smart observation. If there isn't an ugly girl at a table, then they're all the ugly girl. And that makes <laughs> them all upset. That's why they were on their phones. Got to have balance. Good point. Well put. Carl asks, Gareth, when will we get another blind history season? Uh, you know, actually, today I'm talking to Anthony and Kate. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, talking to them today. So I will update you on that. Plus, got a, a really cool interview coming up with uh, John Carney. Yeah. I'm going to be talking to the great John Carney. Today, it's amazing. Recording a little uh, discussion with him. And for those of you who are following politics uh, internationally and all kinds of issues in the you know, social media world, 
There's a brilliant guy called Brendan O'Neill, who I got to speak to uh, last week. He's based in London. He writes for Spiked Online. He's also an editor there, and he's written for The Spectator and a number of other publications. Very, very smart, interesting, erudite guy. And um, you will be hearing from him this Wednesday. So make sure you get ready for that too. Lots of cool stuff still to come. Just updating you notes, mm. you know, so you know yeah. so you know what's going on. Uh, and then later on, this is quite cool. I think uh, you'll be charmed to know that there are, you know, we always try to find you like inspiring people and people who have a really good story and all of that stuff. Well, uh, today we've got Robin Wheeler, who you may remember, um, he did that brilliant in 1996, if you can cast your mind that far back and the alcohol and all the other stuff doesn't really. Oh, I remember the, oh, I thought you were going to say he was in an alcohol ad. No, no, no. But he was in, in 1996, he wrote that, uh, that phrase, being yourself for a living. Do you remember? Sure. Be yourself for a living. Sure. And that was way ahead of its time. Yeah. And it was a bit of an epiphany about the world and where it was heading and a subsequent leap into that vision. Well, he has, I haven't spoken to him since 2021. Um, and he's now, he's changed his life completely. Mm. So we'll find out what he's been up to because he's living in a foreign country. He's doing a whole different set of stuff. His whole life has changed. And so many people are just looking for a new, fresh beginning. And maybe Robin can help you figure that out too. That's Robin Wheeler a little bit later this morning. Also got Dr. Hanan coming on shortly. It is. And uh, I do have to say that if you haven't already, then go and check out Super Bets. We just got our sports scores with James. Uh, okay, he did an okay job. We will make sure that we improve that. But beyond the scoreboard, of course, every week you get to check out Ben with Super Bets. And uh, Ben was in uh, Vic Falls this yes. last weekend, where he has lots of stories that he'll be sharing with us as well here on the show. And Super Bets, if you haven't checked them out, you need to go on there today. Mm -hmm. You need to register. You will get a bonus if you mm. go and register for Make the first time. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, who knows? You could end up placing a bet on Liverpool, like James might have, and win. Super Bets supports responsible gambling strictly, no under 18s. Win is nowhere to stop. The South African Responsible Gambling Foundation's toll-free counseling hotline is 0800-006-008. Uh, there are a whole lot of South Africans returning home. This is an interesting story. It uh, comes to us in the light of many people being very down on South Africa, but surprisingly, South Africa is witnessing a surge in returning expats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The article in question explores the reasons behind this trend, highlighting factors like the high cost of living, in foreign countries, unpleasant weather, a lack of family support there. You're going into all of that. Mm -hmm. Good luck. I know. I really, I really got a, I got a phone call from my cousin last week. Yeah. And he said, Ryan, you have to bring vitamin D. Because apparently it's a real thing that people yeah. commit suicide over there because of lack of... They get depressed. No lack sun. of sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, depression's a big thing because of this. So despite... And vitamin D, you only have to take once a week if you get the proper one. Yeah, yeah. If you get in, that... Injection? No, it's happening. No, no, oh, thank God. All right. Because you don't want injection. Mm -mm. People start thinking you're a heroin addict or a crystal meth addict. No. <laughs> um, South Africa, on the other hand, and surprisingly to many of us who live here, offers a relatively affordable lifestyle, pleasant weather, strong familial ties, making it an attractive option for people who are returning from other countries. Additionally, our improving business environment, well, getting there, and abundant growth opportunities, well, yes, that's true because we have so many problems to solve, which mm. means... Yeah, you know, yeah. potential. We need solutions, growth, and opportunity. Okay, so then all of that enhances people's prospects for those who are seeking all kinds of jobs and chances and opportunities. The shift in immigration patterns signifies a notable change in perception towards South Africa. It remains to be seen whether this trend will continue, but it undoubtedly presents a positive development for the nation's economy and social fabric. So that in the news this morning, something useful to know. And then the ANC, <laughs> on, the, on the other side of the coin, at their manifesto in the uh, Durban, uh, they had it at Moses Mabida Stadium. They, yes. uh, pledged to create, they pledged to create 2.5 million jobs through public procurement as part of a five-year plan to grow the economy and create jobs. Why not? Why didn't you do this before? You've been in power for 30 years. Why are you promising this now? If you were able to deliver that, you would have. You would have. You wouldn't have allowed us to get to the point where we're at 
whatever percentage it is now. Right. 20 to 30 percent anyway, of unemployment. So the ANC's plan will see government prioritize pro- procurement from South African companies with a particular focus on small and medium sized enterprises. Party also plans to increase exports and invest in infrastructure development. As Leanne said, if they wanted to do any of this, if they could do any of this, they would have done any of this. Hasn't happened. Yeah. And they're walking around like they feel like they're celebrities there in KZN. And I was just like, oh. yeah, well, I mean, if you go ask some people about it, so people gets into moods about these kinds of things. She's, so yeah, she's not if, happy. If she overhears this, she's literally just going to have a tantrum. So irritated. She'll have a tantrum. <laughs> And rightly so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also in the news. And then one other thing I need to tell you about, South Carolina, they've had the primary. I don't know if you care about this, but Donald Trump easily defeated Nikki Haley in her home state. Yes, I heard. You've got to ask yourself, the hundreds of millions of dollars that this Nikki Haley has spent to try and run for president when she didn't have a fart in a thunderstorm's chance. Mm. <laughs> what a waste, right? Yeah. Oh, what a waste. And I mean, Trump didn't even have to attend the debates. Like that's that's the other funny thing is like all these people attended the the debates. Vivek Ramaswamy wiped the floor with her at the debate. Um, well, the former president, that's Donald Trump, won his primary opponent's home state by twenty points, his fourth consecutive victory, as he celebrated. Yeah, it's greatest. Uh, Trump made no mention of Haley, who he va- who vowed to stay in the race. Instead, he set his sights on the general election in November. Uh, We're going to look Joe Biden right in the eye, he told supporters minutes after the U.S. media projected him the winner. He's destroying our country, and we're going to get him out. Get out, Joe. You're fired. They're doing everything they can to try and get him out. eh? I mean, Donald? Yeah. I mean, did you see that that deal that they were doing? You know, he's being sued, right? Yeah. One of his options is if he ducks out of the race, then he's fine. Like well, they are literally trying everything yeah, in the book to try to get him out. These are the people who are, defend- these are the, up, the, the defending democracy people, but yeah. they won't allow the American people to choose their president. Nope. Great. Good move. We really believe you. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's turn our attention to the great Dr. Hanan Bushkin. Here he is. Hey, Dr. Hanan, how are you? Hey, guys. I'm doing well. How are you doing? We can't hear you. Hang on. That's my fault. Say it again. How are you? I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing great. Again. Oh, how are you? All right. <laughs> Good, we're just checking. There's no need for you to get all lippy with me first thing on a Monday morning. You're meant to be the psychologist. You're not meant to be an antagonist. But you know what? We break down in order to pick up. That's how we do it. Oh, okay. Is that how it works? All right. So, Doc, um, producer Ryan is very anxious about his impending move overseas. And I know we've spoken a little bit about anxiety in a very general Mm. sense. I know we've spoken about big, big decisions people have to make in their lives. I'm sure that there are loads of people who are listening to us this morning who also have really difficult decisions to make this week, maybe, and perhaps for the rest of this year. Um, How do we deal with anxiety? How do we not let it cripple us? And how do we make decisions that we can be comfortable and confident about? Um, So, Ryan, are you you leaving? Where's Where's Ryan going? So I'm I'm going over to Ireland. It's not it's not like a, a permanent move yet, but it's gonna it's gonna be an attempted permanent move. So I'm gonna go for a few months, see if I can make it work, and uh, you know from there see how we go. But so he's um, going with the training wheels on, Doc. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. Okay. So a couple of of things to unpack there. First of all, how do you let go of something and accept something else? And second of all, how do you deal with anxiety, uh, which obviously is going to come from you know letting go of something valuable and trying to create something valuable somewhere else first of all moving is one of the most stressful things you can do because you are literally uprooting your familiar and moving into an unfamiliar and as we've said many times the brain just likes familiarity whether the familiarity is good or the familiarity is bad the brain doesn't care it just wants familiarity because familiarity means i'm safe So when we move from something that is very much a known, a a family network, a friend's network, a work, a certain routine, I know where my Woolworths is, I know where my gym is, and suddenly I go into a world where I don't even know where I can get milk or now I need to figure out my route to work or I need to figure out uh, a friend, certainly a friend's network, which actually takes a while to to create and financial stability and work and et cetera that takes a lot of effort and it creates incredible amount of anxiety. The best advice that I can give you is that 
if you've made the decision and you have worked out the reasons why you're moving, marry the vision, don't marry the moment. It's very easy to get into what we call imposter syndrome, which is the self-doubt and why am I doing it? Am I doing it for the right reasons? Anxiety only exists when we stop. Anxiety only exists when we stop. If you keep on moving forward, there's no space for anxiety. So people that are anxious and depressed will always tell you, I'm stuck. I'm in my head. I'm in my body. But people that keep on moving forward and creating, getting feedback, creating, getting feedback, creating, getting feedback, there's no space for anxiety. Sure, there is stress, but that's not anxiety. Sure, there is obviously a challenge, but that's not anxiety. So the best advice that I can give you is marry the vision, don't marry the moment, and certainly don't allow yourself to stop and think. Just keep on moving forward. You'll figure everything out about why and who and what and when later. Just figure it out in the momentum forward. What do you think? What do you think of that, Ryan? Is that useful? No, it is useful because, uh, you know, it, I keep thinking back to like, what I'm going to do with my family here. Like I'm, I'm not that I'm worried about my family, but I just, I've, I've always been around. And so now I'm not I'm no longer right there. And so that's the thing that constantly like brings me back. But I know that that feeling of moving ahead, like once I bought the ticket, I realized like, this is the train I'm boarding. And this is where you just like, you committed now. Are you going by train? No, no. I'm going by train. No, I'm not going by train. I'm, I'm to playing. Ireland is a hell of a train. I'd be right. anxious. Yeah. yeah. No. So, so that's that's it. And I think I think you you're right about that. But I also feel like this is very relatable to people who are trying to make that decision as well if they should go, if they shouldn't go, if they're on the edge. Um, so that's why I thought Listen, I'd bring uh, it up. Doc, morning. I want to bring up something else uh, because I see some comments here, and I know that they're being funny in the comments. They're not. They're not being serious. I know that that you know we've got a lot of smart people in the audience who who actually understand it, and so they're being adding a sense of humor to this. But people are talking about Xanor and smoking weed and all that stuff. It does bother me, and I'm I'm by no means saying that we must take them seriously in this case. But there are people who think that the solution to every problem is medication, and especially in the field of of psychology and psychiatry, this has become the go-to. It's like the minute someone feels something. They immediately try to medicate the problem. Mm. Does this drive you up the wall? Because, you know, you're, you're giving us life advice, stuff that will change your attitude and your behavior, which in the long term seems to be a far more valuable course of action. And there are yeah. people out there who are just looking for a quick fix with some sort of medicine. Yeah, you know, Gareth, when um, I was growing up, so when I was a teenager, for example, and I felt anxious, well, what I do is I just go downstairs, lived in a flat downstairs and went and played with my friends. Um, I was active. I went and engaged with life. These mm. days, unfortunately, if, if you think of a child from as young as five or six years old, they feel uncomfortable. They just get on the screen, whether it's the big TV screen or their cell phone. A 12-year-old, they're constantly on their phone. People, according to the latest research, check their phones 360 odd times a day. 360 yeah. odd times a day. Sure. So we are constantly no longer looking up and forming connections. We are looking down and quick fixing our feelings. But the key word is quick fixing. It doesn't fix the real problem when you're distracting. So when I'm on TikTok or on Facebook and certainly on Instagram comparing my life to someone else, that does not fix my marriage. That does not fix my financial insecurity. That certainly does not fix, it, fix my health. It doesn't create a social, real human connection. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an illusion of a connection. So, you know, when you get your thumbs up or you get your clicks or you get your heart on Facebook, what does it mean? It feels, it says, I like you, but who likes you? And in what capacity and what intensity and what quality? It's all airy fairy made up stuff and you think it's real and which actually limits your ability to really connect to people in the real world. So going back to Zaynor, that is just a form of a quick fix. And by the way, sometimes it's necessary in conjunction with dealing with real life. So certain people do need it and some people do need medication in order to get them propelled to go and fix whatever is going on in their world, which is fine. 
But don't confuse medication with fixing the real issue because medication doesn't fix the real world. It might give you the impetus. It's like, you know, I give the analogy of taking a pre-workout before you go to the gym. The yeah. pre-workout is not the workout. <laughs> it is there Damn. to propel you to go to the gym and go and work out. If you just take a pre-workout but don't go to the gym, well, that means that means absolutely nothing. And the same thing with medication. If you're mm -hmm. going to take it to make you better and propel you to move forward and improve, spot on. But if you're going to use it as a way to treat, and only that as a way to treat, then you're selling yourself short. You're going to be very disappointed. All right. I think that's such good advice because we were talking just before this about um, I went away for the weekend and I didn't have cell phone signal at all. Switched my mm -hmm. phone off on Friday, switched it back on on Sunday. And I can tell you right now, that was way better than any course of meds that you could put me on mm -hmm. to get things realigned. And I think that these phones have ruined people, especially young people who are, whose brains are still soft and they're trying to figure out how the world works get addicted to those little dopamine hits and we know i mean it's now it's not even controversial to say it that this stuff is on balance bad for you especially if it's all you have yeah, um, so sure. you know what we've got to we've got to take control of our own lives and stop looking doc for that external locus of responsibility definitely it's the no phone question. it's my meds it's my family it's 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 uh it's unfair it's the government you know yeah. that's gonna help you uh and yeah. and as for as for the anxiety that ryan's feeling that's normal too you mm. should feel anxious if he wasn't anxious and he was just about to uproot his whole life and start somewhere else try something out then he'd be a nutcase right you'd be worried about him yeah if he didn't uh, well if he said to me that he's not feeling anxious about the move i'd say to him well obviously you're not leaving anything valuable behind. Then I'd actually question what you've been doing for the past 20 years, creating what? Nothing? Because the moment you let go of something of value, naturally you're going to be anxious. So if he's not anxious, that means there's nothing of value that he's leaving behind. So it makes complete sense. And it is, listen, it's the opposite sides of the same coin. I mean, I've said this many times. When you build value, you also build stress. Value comes with stress. So my kids who I value very much comes with stress. Your job comes with mm -hmm. stress because you value it. Right. If you don't, if you don't feel stress over something, it's because there's no value. So if truly somebody said to me, Hanan, how do I eliminate stress? The real answer is, well, eliminate everything that you value, which is not possible because then you get depressed. So yeah, it's of course right. it's understandable why you would feel stressed, but go and create value wherever you're going now. Uh, John Bad Dog says in the comments, Ryan, uh, my mm. brother-in-law went to Ireland for five years working as an architect. He had a good time, but he said he can't see how any South African could be happy there unless you love drinking and being in the pub. <laughs> well, then that's Ryan's fine. He'll, he loves being in the pub, so that'll oh. work out fine. That'll Perfect. And then uh, Carl is being extra sarcastic and extra salty this morning. <laughs> Doc, if I don't take my antihistamine, I can't breathe by 10 a.m. <laughs> I don't know how to treat the root cause. <laughs> <laughs> does it even deserve a, a, a response no, no don't respond to that <laughs> don't, respond. don't all right well here's just plain jared um who brings up a much more serious kind of thing suffered from chronic anxiety in my early 20s never took any medication happy to say that i recovered all by myself it is very possible and look i mean it's it's brilliant and i love these stories uh people develop the internal skill set to manage their own lives and it's not to say that if you have anxiety, you shouldn't lean on external things to get you going. And we all lean on external things, whether you lean on family or friends or financial security or a sense of purpose. You always have something or gym, which is also external. Whether you lean on external things to make you internally driven to go and fix the problem, that's perfect. So people that can do it on their own, they never really do it on their own. They just mean I did it without medication, which is fine. But if you do need medication, just understand. The medication is not the treatment alone. Medication and fixing or learning how to fix the problem will fix the problem. So you don't have to be a hero and not take medication in order to deal with something. If you need it, use it. But if you don't need it, certainly develop the skill set to manage it yourself. I love it. Thank you, Doc. Uh, Dr. Hanan will join us next Monday again. He is our shrink, but he can be yours too. Just send us an email, contact at cliffcentral.com. And for all you know, we might be able to set you on the right path, give you that internal skill set that he's talking about now. We're certainly trying. 
every week. Can't mm-hmm. say we're not trying. Can't say we're not trying. And, uh, you know, Dr. Hanan's not charging you when you come on the show. If you go to him in person, he's going to charge like a wounded buffalo. The man's busy. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Doc. I appreciate it this morning. <laughs> yeah, good luck, yeah. Brian. Yeah, Thank good you. luck, Brian. I appreciate good it. Good luck with all that drinking in the pub. <laughs> that <John's telling> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Doc. We'll see, see you, you next guys. week. See awesome. You, Cheers. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good morning. It is a Monday on cliffcentral.com, the 26th of February. There's so much stuff happening in the next couple of weeks, and we'll tell you all about that as it starts to happen. Um, But before we get to any of that, we've got to update you on some of the stories in the news, some of the things we picked up on over the weekend. And uh, also, I believe the Screen Actors Guild is doing their awards or something. Yes, they are. Are you paying attention to that for us? I don't usually. Okay. um, but it just, so what made it interesting this time around? It just kind of, it was coming up in my feed and there've been so many awards and yeah. these are all building up to obviously the Oscars. Oscars. Um, and so just finding out that the the, the usual suspects were up there, um, Oppenheimer, mm-hmm. uh, Succession. I watched Oppenheimer, by the way. You? Finally, I got around to it, uh, what, three, four weeks ago. Oh, you did mention it. You did yeah. mention yes. it. Yeah. Good movie. Um, there's Good Succession, movie. which but was slow, the, huh? I found it a bit slow. I haven't seen it yet. I don't need to know about Oppenheimer's uh, communist girlfriend. (laughs) Who the hell? I mean, what uh, was that necessary? Why do they have to include? Let me ask you this. Straight up questions, not some guy thing. Mm. I'm not trying to be one of the red pill dudes. But if you're watching a movie about the guy who helped to build the atomic bomb, who cares about his communist whiny girlfriend? 
So it didn't make any sense putting it in there. Could we left out? I don't think, like, doesn't, it, every story doesn't have to have a romantic angle. It doesn't make the story better or worse. Yeah, that sounds an odd Didn't make any true. difference. Mm. Why have the communist girlfriend in there? First of all, she's a communist. The less communists you have in a movie, the better. <laughs> Second of all, why do we have to have her? She was whining and carrying on to hear about how bad he was at relationships. Do you give a shit about Oppenheimer's bad relationships? Do you? No, really don't care. When you read a book about the atomic bomb being made, are you really interested in whether Robert J. Oppenheimer was a good boyfriend? Well, I mean, it does give some perspective, I suppose, but it, I didn't see the movie. But what? You know what this is? It's Hollywood. They got this thing in their heads because they're still stuck in the, I don't know, 1940s maybe. That, oh no, girls aren't going to watch this unless there's uh, a romantic right. angle. That's what they think, these idiots in Hollywood. Meanwhile, any woman who's going to see Oppenheimer isn't going, well, I've heard there's a great love story in this. <laughs> she's either being dragged there by her boyfriend, if it's an old school kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, okay, let me sit through this. Maybe it'll be interesting. Or she's genuinely interested in how the atomic bomb was made too. Yeah. Or, or just watching uh, a, a, a movie that's well made and well yeah, produced yeah, right. and well how filmed. How about you don't treat her like a damsel in distress? And, oh, unless there's a romantic <laughs> angle, I don't think I shall be very excited or entertained. I shall just return to my knitting and kittens. <laughs> it's, it's unnecessary. Yeah. I loved the movie. It was very good. Got a bit slow around the relationship stuff. And I'm not saying that there isn't a place for it. There are lots of things, lots of stories that I love that have love stories as a part of them. I'm not some cold reptile. Yeah, like for me, the watching um, a, a movie about Obama wouldn't be the same unless it was with Michelle. Big Mike. Hmm? Is that what the movie was called? Well, the, I think the biopic for Michelle Obama will be called Big Mike, won't it? I don't know. Um. Oh, sorry. No, that's just me. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> you don't know. You don't know the Big Mike conspiracy no. that Michelle Obama's a man. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I was on another planet. Oh, no, there's a romance. Here. Now that would be a great romance story. We'd find oh, out. No. Uh, yeah, we'd find out whether it's true or not. You okay. must. You must hear the conspiracy theories that are going around at the moment. So here's the problem with the left wing say everything they don't like is a conspiracy theory. The right wing believe everything is a conspiracy theory. So you've got these two lunatic poles that are attracting crazy people. Completely. On the one side, anything we don't like, anything we don't agree with, it's got to be a conspiracy theory and conspiracy theories are all wrong. And then on the other side, you've got a bunch of other lunatics who are going, everything's a conspiracy. Nothing's true. You can't trust anybody. And neither of them are going to get any closer to the actual truth. Oh, the stupidity. I it is can't. stupid, right? Okay, so let's carry on. Okay, Succession, which I loved. So, oh, so glad that was up there. What a great show. So is that nominated for a whole lot of awards? Um, they, the whole cast, I oh, think, won. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, oh, they won because it's already happened. Yeah. yeah. The Bear, which I haven't got around to watching yet. Uh, Beef, which I watched with Ali Wong. Um very, very interesting. A, a cool, a cool. I haven't seen the bear show. or beef. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the bear is the one about the chef in the white shirt. He's just done a Calvin Klein ad. I don't the whole care world's about falling apart. <laughs> I don't care about that. Just move on. Uh, and then apparently, Killers of the Mo Flower Moon, which I haven't heard of, and the yeah. holdovers. No, that Killers of the Flower Moon is apparently very good, but it's 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 heavy. You have to really like. You have to pay attention. It's not one of those movies you could. Sit and Message your friends on the phone because you're bored. You have to pay attention. Barbara Streisand got a SAG oh, sweet, Life Jesus. Achievements. What the hell is she? <laughs> oh, why did you have to bring her up? I, I was having such you. a good morning. <laughs> oh, I hate you. Know, I worked out one of the reasons I hate Barbara. One, just one. <laughs> Apart from the fact that every time there's an election in America and it doesn't, she says, if this election, if this election doesn't go my way, I'm leaving. And she never leaves, no matter what happens. So she's just full of shit. Plus, she, how many times has she said she's quitting the business? And then she does a farewell yeah, she's tour. Yeah, just done a, yeah. <laughs> Can't say no to the 
farewell to her money, can she, Mm-mm. Barbara Streisand? So those are two things I don't like about her, but that wasn't even the one I was going to tell you. <laughs> I found out, figured it out, didn't find out. Suddenly thought about it. So my dad loves Barbara Streisand music. My mom. Oh, mm-hmm. and I, when I was a kid, I had to listen to that. Yeah. So I hate it. My mom spoiled that for me. Well, I, I mean, Do you know who Barbara Streisand is even, Ryan? So I know of Barbara Streisand, but like, I don't know much about. Oh, Barbara you're Streisand. lucky. Keep it that way. I'm not even going to ruin it. Like, <laughs> can you hear me? Oh. My mom did it f- with Jesus. Phil Collins for me. <laughs> Shame. Phil Collins is, I think if he's still alive, he's having a very hard time. Can't drum anymore. Yeah. He's got uh, some disease. Oh. He's Celine Dion's got this uh, stiff person disease. Yeah. And Barbara Streisand's fine. The world is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> what did she get? Lifetime, Lifetime achievement. achievement yeah. Let's hope this is a sign to her that you can now retire for real. Maybe that's what they're trying to tell her. Oh, Barbara Streisand. And then Pedro Pascal won for The Last of Us. I tried to watch that. I'm just not good at Pain watching. really good. I like zombie stuff. It. it was a zombie thing, wasn't it? I don't think yeah. it was. People was eating it? each other. No. no. I know there's a game about it, which is really, really good. A lot of my friends love it. Uh, the Crown came up, but yes. Not a fan of The Crown. Not? No. Why don't you like about it? Because everybody else is raving. So come on, Ryan. Bring us the... Maybe uh, I need to get past the first episode. Bring us the left field I just thought it was a very, like, cold first episode. And I didn't really, like, pick it up afterwards. I rather got into the real documentary What, you thought the Queen would be warm and inviting? (laughs) She'd come and have a fireside chat and let's talk about our emotions. Yeah. You think the Queen is going to be warm? No, well, I just story it about the queen. A little bit easier to the get The queen into. who used to touch her children with a ten foot pole with a health inspector <laughs> yeah. on the end. Oh, I think one of the children is here. I can't tell which one. Oh, put it back. <laughs> nah, I preferred. I, I I watched one episode of The Crown and I thought, let me just dive straight into the documentary stuff. And I, I preferred okay. that. Okay, yeah, fair that. enough. It's not everybody's thing. Mm. I just this Imelda what, 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 Staunton. Who does the Queen in the latest uh, season of The Crown? Mm-hmm. It just doesn't look like her. Um, it's I, so I, funny how it can put you off. Yeah, uh, the, the Diana woman is very good. She like does the whole Diana thing mm. very well. The Charles guy also doesn't look like I. I can't take. I can't work with them. Can't and, yeah. and even the Philip guy. He's like it's very distracting. Ah, the Anne is good. The 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 Princess Diana is good. The rest, no. I mean, I've seen comedies where they're more like them. <laughs> this is true. Right? So yeah. I'm with you on, on The Crown. I'm not entirely sold. Robert Downey Jr. was brilliant, says Rajesh. Well, in what? Because he's good in everything, isn't yeah. he? He's just fantastic. Wasn't he in Oppenheimer? Uh, yes, he was. Correct. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, executive He played producer. the guy who was uh, trying to become um, a cabinet uh, secretary. But he basically sold... Oppenheimer down the river. Oh, a lot really? of political shenanigans. Oh. Yeah, and Donnie Jr. is brilliant. I mean, it takes you a second to realize it's him because the makeup's good. Sure. But you kind of, you, you get into it very quickly and he, he's so convincing that Robert Donnie Jr., man, he's fantastic. Carl says, I would listen to Streisand over Beyonce any day. <laughs> that fucking screaming is horrid. Please can someone explain Beyonce's success to me? Makes no sense. Hey, I heard the Beyonce country song. Yes, t- Texas. For the first time. Down or whatever. Okay, yeah. Older. So I heard this for the first time. Now, you can um, you can say whatever you want about it. I think it's kind of catchy. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, not a, I'm not a Beyonce fan. I liked Destiny's Child all those years ago. I've only heard the first few bars. That's good. Because I'm not even a country fan, but yeah. it, it's good. Give it a try. I hmm. can't play it for you now. I'll get into trouble. But see if you can get hold of that and just listen to it. Come back with uh, and and be objective. You know, don't let your, your preconceived uh, Beyonce stuff get in the way. It's a sensitive topic in this office. I don't Why? Because so a few weeks ago, um, we were we were all talking about um, I can't remember. I think it was the Taylor Swift versus the Beyonce saga came up. No, you're obviously. very much a I'm very much a Swift fan. And I, I think right now I'm she's the biggest pop star in the world. Like, come on, she's mm. selling out. She just played her that biggest. That doesn't help audience. your argument though. I mean, a lot of people in this country vote A and C. That doesn't mean that they're fantastic. <laughs> but so I just wanted to compare. And so I said in this moment right now, Taylor Swift is uh 
you know bigger than Beyonce, more, big, bigger than Beyonce, more right. relevant. So for people in the Bay Hive, that is, and yeah, right. and I remember some Piwe and Duma and Aaron me. jumped on top of me. Uh, mm. This is a conversation we had probably about a, three, four weeks ago. And I remember they were like, Ryan, you cannot compare because Beyonce has done this and this and this. Did it become a black like, white thing? No, no. It didn't. Oh, okay, it, good. But it, it, I was just like, guys, when you're driving home and you listen to the radio, do you hear a Beyonce song? No. But you hear at least three Taylor Swift songs in like who's an the, hour. Who's, well, first hours. of all, who's listening to the radio? I know. Second but, of all, <laughs> I, have, I heard the Beyonce song not on the radio. I, it came up in a, a suggested playlist. Right. For me, and I Are you on like, Spotify. You on yes, Music? I'm on Spotify. You're on Spotify yeah. and Apple Music. I got both. Cool. And I thought this is good, and I, and I realized it was Beyonce because I could hear her voice, right? And she's got a very distinctive mm. sound. And I'm not. I've always said horrible things about Beyonce, so I don't have to defend my anti Beyonce credentials. Oh, of mm-hmm. But I also hate Taylor Swift. <laughs> I think she's just bubblegum bullshit singing about <laughs> bad relationships. I mean. Trapped in a 15-year-old girl's head the whole time. <laughs> Only you could find that entertaining, Ryan. Thank God you're going to Ireland. <laughs> Our collective IQ in South Africa will rise by like 100 points. Um, yeah, like even both, Billie, Billie Eilish's music is more mature than hers, I but think. But both of those, yeah, so much Beyonce, Taylor Swift, I, I don't have a dog in the fight. But I'll tell you what, Beyonce's song, this country one, I, I like. Okay. I'm and gonna, the, and, I, and, and there have been the Taylor show. Swift songs that I've thought were very good too. But at the moment, I just I've think they're both. Some boring. comments on here that said that you used to be a Taylor Swift fan back in the day. Yeah, because he probably just thought I, I she was remember. hot. I did think she was hot, and it was wow. because she was. It was age appropriate. You know, she was singing about mm. things that a twenty-something should. Right. There's no, something. Like there's something like Arrested Development about her not moving on. The content of her songs has stayed fifteen-year-old, mm. and that's that's embarrassing when you're thirty-something. But listen, she's. She, she's one of those. She's going to live forever. One of those pop stars that that'll never fade into into darkness until she gets stiff person disease. <laughs> so she's got a, just you wait. She's got decades ahead of just her. Just going to pull a Barbara Streisand oh, and just wow. be okay. <laughs> she's got wow. decades to sing about serious stuff. So, well, look at us talking fun. about. Look at us talking about pop music. All right, uh, Destiny's child had a learning disability and it was Beyonce's fault. Once my cat got stuck under the lawnmower and I thought my wife was playing all the single ladies. <laughs> That's Carl. Very good. Wow. Yeah. Very, very good. Very good. See, good. Duma used to say, uh, you know how they talk about the Beyonce of the group? He used to say, who was Destiny's child? Yeah. It was Beyonce. It was. But yeah. the other two, for, as a band in the 90s, the late 90s, they were the flavor of the moment. Mm. The whole soundtrack of the world at one point was Destiny's Child. I don't think you could say that for Beyonce. I'm biased though. Beyonce fans, cry somewhere else. I don't care if you uh, don't agree (laughs) with me. Um, And Taylor Swift fans, I could care less about you guys either. I'm I'm totally disinterested. You have your side uh, bar fights about who's the best of these two. I don't think either of them are that great. And you know what? (laughs) I disagree with Leanne too. I don't think in 20 years' time people are going to be thinking, well, Taylor, she's still got it. She's still hot. She'll have gone. Hopefully this uh, football player knocks her up. What's his name? Uh, Travis Kelsey. Knock her up. (laughs) Take her home. Wife the woman. She's fantastic. She's She's a good-looking woman. She's got tremendous amounts of money. She needs a new project. She needs to be knocked up by this football player. (laughs) And she needs to be a mom. And and her and to tell you what, then you watch that music suddenly mature. And then she'll have a whole new uh, drive. So, don't don't uh, shoot the messenger. No, it's, it's okay. She's, she'll get be like, Han- I'll get Dr. Tanam back on you. He'll agree with me. She'll be like a Kylie Minogue. I Knock think. her up. Coming back every now and then. Come on. What's the guy's name? Travis Kelsey. Travis. It sounds I mean, like a. Why does that sound like a woman's name? Why do people use normal names anymore? Oh, well, I mean, it's a surname. It's Travis yeah. Kelsey. Kelsey. Yeah. Sounds like a chick, man. But I mean, the thing is that the nice thing about him is he's got his own stuff going. Like he's not. You know, yeah, yeah I'm not. I, I, I'm not saying. I, I'm not saying either of them have to give up on their lives. No, no, of course. They would make a great all-American couple. He's the football <laughs> jock. She's Why the prom the queen. Come on, it's perfect. America needs a fairy tale. They've got this fucking geriatric in the White House. They've got the orange guy on the sidelines. Yeah. <laughs> They've got all these piss poor politicians and 
all this <laughs> nonsense in Silicon Valley. They need a good story. That's I'm, true. I, I'm not being selfish here of and course. saying this is for me and for and for Taylor Swift to be happy and Travis Kelsey to be happy. This is for America. Do it for your country. Travis and Taylor, have a child. Get married and live happily ever after. I mean, it's like, have you seen Beyonce's child? Uh, I think it's Blue Ivy. Blue Iris. Blue Ivy. Aren't she's, they more? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not sure if there's more than one, but I know she's currently on <laughs> tour with Beyonce. She's on tour with him. Yeah, so she's like a dancer for she's Beyonce. A, uh, Beyonce. An, she's an accessory. See. Yeah. It's and like the Kardashians with theirs. Oh my God, did you see that video of uh, uh, the, the mom? Uh, Kim, um, Kim, Kim, uh, what? No, man. Oh, um, oh, the mom. Kyle, what's the what, mother's name? The mother's name. Oh, now for you. Now she married the girl, guy who's now a girl. I'm talking about. I'm trying to think of Chris who it is. Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner. See, again, a guy's name. Chris Jenner. So, Chris Jenner was on this TV talk show. She couldn't remember the names of her grandchildren. Sure. I don't blame her. Eight of them. Uh, but they've got the worst names. Please find me that clip. James, let's test him. Let's test him. James, find us the clip of Chris Jenner on some TV talk show talking about her grandchildren's names. She gets all of them except one. And then she's like, oh, I love you. And she mentions the last one. And it's all very awkward and embarrassing. That kid's going to grow up with big problems. Big problem. Granny didn't remember me. She, she reels off all the other names. All of her grandchildren have the shittest names. You've ever heard. So, so strange. It's so funny. We were talking about like horrible names over the weekend and also nice names. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought like if you had kids, what you would call them? I used to have a little list when I, I was bet you when did. I was young. Oh. When I was like in high school, you know, varsity. Yes. Hurry up, James, says all the people in the comments. But I liked, and this is where you'll be critical. Is I liked girls' names for guys and guys' names for girls. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like yeah. I like softer names for guys, like Shannon. Oh, um, sweet Jesus. Yeah. You're like a bunch of simps. That's what you want. <laughs> Simpy beta males. Thank God you didn't have a son. Well, no, look, thank goodness I didn't have children at all, Gareth. We can we can be completely honest there. Probably me too. I, I always thought of uh I used to love I still love the the, the Top Gun movie. So I always liked the name Maverick. I thought it was such a cool name. As a first name? Yeah. Okay. Maverick. Yeah, it was his code name. It was like his... No, I know, but have that as a first name? How you many must... Mavericks do you know? You mustn't have kids either. <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> Call your child Maverick. We're kind of a... So... <laughs> well, it's better than Goose, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, if those are your only choices, sure. But there are other names. <laughs> like Ted What would you name yours? John yeah. and... Ben and Henry and like normal names. So like what Ted and John and Ben and Henry. I think in, there are lots of good normal names that have been around for centuries and people are trying to be creative. Like the, we want the Kardashians to be creative. You must hear these names they've given their children. Terrible. I'm going to try to remember some of them. There's Oh, it's horrible. So North is one of them. So Northwest. here, it says North, Saint, Chicago and Psalm. Yeah, Those Psalm, are four of them. Psalm. Psalm. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Psalm. I mean, it's Psalm. I thought Saint was pretty cool. Saint can be cool. It's not a good name. Really, you can't do that. <laughs> what if the child ends up growing up to be a devil and then his name is Saint? What if he's a drug-addled fat loser? Sure. And he spends Yeah, but you can his... imagine like a gangster guy being called Saint. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah. I said loser. Like claiming it. I said loser. What if oh, he's yeah. a loser and he's called Saint? Oh, oh then... there's that. There's that pathetic Saint West. Saint West. Saint yeah. West. I mean, really. Do you also judge yeah, people by are. the name? Okay, so Leanne's just looked it up. So there we go. you know what? Uh, we give up with you, James. Your your first job today, your your first actual directive, and you failed at it. The audience is deeply disappointed in you. Uh, Leanne, what have we got? What are the names? Uh, we've got Mason Dash Disick. Oh. Uh, Mason Disick. Oh. Yes. So, he, so he, his, I get a, his and pain, when I say dash, I, I mean D A S H. I get a pain right up my asshole when you say that. That is a horrible oh, dash name. Dash is the middle name? Dash D A S H. It's not oh, a hyphen. I thought you were actually just spelling it. I thought you were saying dash. No, I like, would have child, said hyphen. Child abuse. Okay, carry on. Penelope Scotland Disick. Oh. Psalm West. Dream Renee Kardashian. Dream. Uh, yeah. Dream. Rain, as in your horse's reins. Um, Ashton Disick. 
Ashton. Stormy with an I, Webster. Mm-hmm. True Thompson. True. That was the one that she forgot. She Air, forgot true. Air with an E at the end. Webster. Uh, uh, yeah, and then Kim, Courtney, Kyler. Oh, horrific. Robert and... It's horrific. Yeah. I, I, it's child abuse, really. Oh. So the oldest one is 14. That's Mason Dash Disick. I know someone who wanted to call their... There's a couple. They wanted to call their daughter Catherine. <laughs> Crackle. <laughs> oh put, put an R in there. <laughs> Crackle. Crackle. And she'd struggled through life. Her whole life would be saying, no, no. Catherine. I don't have a speech in front of me. It's Catherine. Or Samatha. Oh, no, Samatha. no, no. Samatha. No, it's like you forgot the end. Right. I mean, at least that's entertaining. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> it's like. I do like um, that. So the, the two gardeners. Oh, wait, look, wait, hang I on, know. hang on. Here, here's the clip. Oh, you yeah. want to see okay, this? Go. All right, here yeah, I'd like yeah. to say something. That's nice. Um, hey, I'm going to give you a quiz because I think this is in- incredible. Okay. okay. Name all of your uh, grandkids. Okay. Mason, Penelope, Rain, North, Saint, Chicago, Psalm, uh, Stormy, Wolf. Um, hold on. Dream. Um, how many is that? You're missing one. Help me. I'm missing one. Uh huh. I said dream. Um, yeah. True. Yes. Oh, true. I love you so much. Yes. True. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Saves the best for last. Ugh. Ugh. Well, I, well, there she is. What a great grandmother. Don't remember her fucking name. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, I don't blame her at all. She must be so sick of new ones coming out. I. I <laughs> but you see, this is, she got it. At least she got it right. All of her children with a K. So she wouldn't have to think too much. And there's another one coming because um, Courtney's just, uh, is it, no, is it Courtney? See, with, none with, of with us Travis know. Barker, with Travis Barker, they having a kid. She should, I think the kid's born now. I don't care. I, I, I really, like the, the Kardashians, they've had their moment now. They must, it's, it's time. Someone's got to shoot them. The whole lot of them just line them up and just get rid of the Kardashians. Are you kidding? Ryan Seacrest is making so much money. They are slowing show. us down as a species. They're at the <laughs> back of the species line and they are slowing us down. I don't want the Kardashians to be a part of our reality from this year on. But Gareth, you can stop bitching. They've been around for how yeah, many years? They're not going around. anywhere. They're, get used to them. they're just going to become more and more. I've met them. You have too. I know. They're the dumbest people you've ever met. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so wait, don't, wait, don't, wait, don't you, you give me hell because I'm I'm anti You yeah. just agreed they're the no, dumbest people. Wait, who you've did ever you meet? Um, oh, which ones were Kim they? And Kim and uh, one of the other. What did they come to the, the studio? man? The manly yes. one. What's the manly uh, one? What Bruce? <laughs> no, um, not that manly. At the, at the, the, time. <laughs> the youngest of the three. No sisters. man, it wasn't the youngest because it wasn't a Jenna. It no, was, it, it was wasn't a, a Jenna. It wasn't I mean, Rob. The youngest of the three Kardashian the tall, sisters. Tall, broad shoulder. Oh, Courtney. That's the one. That's Courtney. That was the one. That's the one. Before she She lost was more the talkative than the other one. Wait, so they came yeah, to she's the actually, studio? She's the only one I think I could have a conversation with. We tried. Yeah, we did. We tried. <laughs> we tried to have a conversation with them. The one sat on her phone the whole time, like those unhappy girls at the table. Then they I found a five-cent coin on the table. And they were the... they were just mesmerized. Oh, look. look, it's a, it's almost so pretty. Like, it's almost like our money, but it's different. Well, to be fair, if I found a five cent coin now, I'd also probably stare at it like we don't have those anymore. <laughs> this is <laughs> true. Good point. <laughs> hey, listen, have you ever had anyone say they don't trust the new money that you've given them? Because, no, you know, they've changed the yet. money. Again. Well, uh, the last year and a half, they changed yeah. the money. And... Some people look at this, they don't know that it, they don't think it's the real thing. It does they look They think it's Hong Kong. Mm. I had a 10 rand note in my purse that I gave to a car guard this weekend. And it, it was disgusting. You could see someone had rolled it up and put it up their ass at some point. <laughs> you know when it's really soft <laughs> and it doesn't hold its shape? Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> That's horrific. And it had little like, uh, like brown lines on it. Mm. That was, I, I, I spent... Yesterday, sorting out electricity and the day before at COJ on a Saturday to, to sit down and be greeted by a sullen woman mm. who sat there. Sullen. And when I said um, my house was in the process of being transferred, she said, oh, you leaving South Africa. That was her opening oh, line no. to me. With disgust, eh? 
Sure. And that sure. is how our conversation started. Ended up with me actually crying out of frustration mm. because I was like, right. I don't want to go down this path if you don't mind. I need to hear another story of you crying. So I'm just going to nip that in the bud right away. Uh, Carl says these Kardashians are like iPhones. A new one comes out each year. No improvements on the previous one. No. Very smart. Very good. Excellent point. Uh, Bruce, not that manly, says Richard. Yes. No, yeah. not anymore. I have a bloke friend called Meredith, and his dad is called Vivian. Wow. Hmm. I still like Catherine. <laughs> I you'd like that one. Catherine. <laughs> Sounds so, like, vile. What else are you going to make up? All right. How about the world's most crowded island? Do you know where it is? Can you, do no. you have any guesses? Japan. No. Japan's it's, the world, isn't it? It's within our own continent. Here in Africa? Yes. I had no idea about this place. I can't. It's yeah, not Madagascar. Madagascar is quite sparsely populated. It's not. It's so it's an island, not in the sea. Maybe uh -oh. that'll help. Mm -hmm. What is it? Go on, tell us. It's called Migingo Island. Are you making it up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it up as <laughs> we go. Gong, 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 Mig gong. Migingo. You bullshitter. <laughs> it's prove it in the in the waters of Lake Victoria. Okay. So obviously it's um, surrounded by a number of countries. There are a number of countries that are... <laughs> Who claims it? That's, that's the whole issue about this, right? But this tiny little island, I've sent you pictures, has a fluctuating... Oh, horrible. <laughs> oh, wow. What a horrible place. It's just filled with shacks. How many people do you think live on there? I don't know. I'd say, I'd say 100. 500 people. 500? 500. 500 people on this little rocky outcrop in the middle of... Lake Victoria, um, it's earned, it's actually earned the title of the world's most crowded island Horrible. because the density is so extreme beyond anywhere else. And uh, before the 1990s, it never existed. It's only because Lake Victoria's waters have um, lowered or started receding that you can see it now. So as soon as this new... Were these people underwater before then? No, they weren't there. <laughs> as soon as this little rocky outcrop came about, people literally swam and got in boats and went and inhabited oh. this little island. And look at it now. It is such a revolting place. It's a hotbed of territorial disputes between Kenya and Uganda. <laughs> yeah. Because it emerged on the border between Kenya and Uganda. Both of the nations are trying to claim ownership. Why? Wow. Who knows why? Oh, they both want it? They I was I was it. thinking the dispute was that they both didn't want it. They're like, no, you have it. No, you have it. They want it. They still haven't decided whose is whose, um, a Ugandan fisherman, because this is an article from a, a travel journalist who actually went there. And to Ugh. get there, you can get there. But I mean, who would want it? It is yeah. crazy. So there's some kind of... Um, there's a reason why there, there are a lot of fish there. So fishing is like really amazing. And that's what's keeping this entire little island, you know, going. Okay. Uh, okay. So one of the things is that it's about six hours from Uganda by speedboat and only so not two close, from huh? Kenya. It's really remote. That's it's quite far. And all these people live on this trashy island all together, all 500 of them. Oh, happily. What did they, what were they running from? Whatever they were leaving behind must be so much worse because it doesn't look like paradise. So, you know, when you think of an island, you yeah. think of palm trees and a beautiful beach. Oh, no. You think of a little bit of space. This doesn't have one ounce of greenery. No. Well, no. It, it's got some bushes on the side of the cliff face where no one Hardly. can build their shanty town. Hardly. Horrible place. And, and they're going there because they want to be there. Even though it's six, were they born six there? hours by speedboat yeah, from Uganda and two hours oh. by speedboat from speedboat. Uganda. And who and has they don't a have, speedboat? They don't have speedboats. Look at this picture. There's some fishing boats There's there. There's some canoes. Yeah, that doesn't look very speedy if you ask me. No, exactly. So, yes, there are people who are being born there. Um, you can walk around the entire perimeter of the island in 10 minutes. Less We've got than a solution. Oh Move these people out. Put them in Malibu and put the Kardashians on the side. <laughs> it'd be too far. It'd be, be too cars. remote for us to pay attention to Are you to kidding? Them. This is the size of their living room. Yeah. That's why we must move them there. And they'll stop breeding. So here's the thing. The waters are a gold mine for Nile perch, which is um, a type okay. of fish. Yeah. And so this has turned it into a complete fishing hub. Fish prices, as we know, have surged by 50%. So it's a lucrative income for these local fishermen. Um, but obviously, there are constant threats from pirates, 
go stealing fish, cash. Oh, what a nasty engines, place. Engines, anything that they can find. Engines. Well, well who would want to be here? What a terrible, terrible place. It's. I mean, someone said here, Epstein's Island <laughs> was once the most crowded island if you, if you count all the celebrities who were there. Wow. Um, somebody says it's Alex uh, Township by the sea. Alex with a view. <laughs> Wow. That's a really it's crazy. Bad place. Some um, some people get like violently tortured by these pirates. Some people go missing, never to be found again. It's also one of the most dangerous places to swim hmm. because of the, the pirates. Uh, it has this entire island, this maze of corrugated metal houses. Yeah, four bars, nice. So they're drunks as well. One, one beauty salon, one pharmacy. Uh, an open air casino. I don't know how that fits in. And Jesus. several brothels. Several. Several brothels. Brothels. Several brothels. Well, I mean, you're on a remote island and 500 you have people. How many brothels do you need? One? Are the people all not related? Is that much like work demanding. That's a very unhealthy, <laughs> insanitary place. Yeah. If I do say so myself, I don't think it's a good idea as a, as a tourist destination. Definitely not. He Look, the. the he, uh, also certainly doesn't recommend it, but explains how he how had many, to do it. What did he rate it on Yelp? <laughs> did he give it a one star? <laughs> yeah, I gave it a one. No parking. <laughs> Terrible place. Um, you see what Congo Chris said? Congo Chris yeah. said, let's send James there to do a travel report. <laughs> oh, that would be a good first job for him. <clears throat> what an awful place. How scary. But you've got to befriend fishermen and like you know, I, certain I, people. To I get come there. in here and I tell you about this amazing place I've been to. What do you <laughs> give me? The shittiest island on earth. Also, I was just, I was just fascinated. <laughs> I've never seen not even a documentary on this. Also, fishermen are the worst people to make friends with. I, I, coming from a camping background and you have a speedboat, let me tell you, they are not the biggest fans when you bring that boat in. They always give you this look like don't cut their line. You know? Yeah. I, so I went. I imagine um, it's quite difficult. I went line fishing with my partner at the time and this fisherman in uh, the Maldives. Oh yeah. yeah. And we were, we literally found him after being to a bar and and discussing with the barman. We said we don't want to go on these fishing excursions where, um, you know, it's a whole tourist thing and they take you fishing and the fifteen of you on a boat. So he said, no, 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 no. I've got a friend. Got a friend who lives on the island. He's got a boat. He'll take you. Mm -hmm. And we went to his house, um, and which was like a bit of a brothel in itself. Oh my there God, were women wow. coming out <laughs> topless with beer, holding empty beer bottles. Sure. And it was about nine o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> and so the two of us got into this boat, which he just t turned over that was lying on the sand, um, had this little engine. We went into quite deep, you know, deep waters. And... Then I caught a fish, blind fishing, this massive fish, and then cried while it <laughs> tried to die in the boat. Um, but then we actually realized, you know, we had no cell phone reception. No, no one knew where we were. This guy could have killed you, thrown you overboard. Or pirates or kidnapped for money. Pirates. Next thing this big boat does come past, and I'm thinking the worst. But it was a bunch of tourists. And then uh, the engine gave out. It was one of those where you pull the string. Da, 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 da. Uh. That gave out completely. <laughs> completely. So, actually, how? Uh, how <laughs> I was so sunburned. I, I actually, I was ill because we were stuck out there for Perfect. hours. And I was convinced this was the end of my life and no one knew where we were. How stupid. <laughs> and then we experienced a lot and of it turned out, <laughs> What it turned, did Sia used to say? Leanne, you have lived. <laughs> it turned out to be completely innocent. He was. Absolutely fine. We gave him some money. We gave him the fish I caught. Um, Did his engine miraculously start once you gave him money? No, no. Uh, In fact, we had, he had to paddle us back to shore. Uh, okay. It's quite scary. Got back into his car, listened to some, to some island music while he smoked mm -hmm. a spliff, and all was well. Sure. Look at the adventures you had to be on to be here this morning. Yeah, no, fair enough. Also, it must be so... Like, can you imagine how confusing it must be for, for people on boats now to distinguish pirates from, you know, tourist boats? Mm. Yeah, because you don't know. Because now you don't know. I am the so captain many... now. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. All right, well, we're very glad that you're okay yes. all these years later. Good stories. Right, so how would we have ever heard these harrowing tales? I could still be missing. Wait, so did you let that duck fish just flop in the boat? Yeah. What it? are you supposed to do? 
No, well, I, I'm just laughing because when so when long to camping, die. It was horrible. When we went camping, my uncle oh, no, uh, another camping story. He 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 took off his sock to grab the fish, and then he knocked it out with a spoon. Yeah, because I had a spoon. No, in I know, my... but like I just. This is West Rand. I had a little travel part, of the, part of the fun in the West Rand, you have to have a spoon and a sock <laughs> when you go fishing. And a brick in your bag. Mm. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, we... that's what my friend told me. He said, when you go, you need to have a brick in your bag. She lived there. What's the West Rand? <laughs> yes. Uh, so Timothy Mbambo says he really enjoyed uh... the interview that I did with Siswem Pofu Walsh which is up on uh, YouTube at the moment. Brilliant. You can go and see it if you'd like. I don't do a lot of interviews outside of this show, because why? If you want to hear what I have to say, come here. Exactly. Um, but uh, I did it, and he's a, he's a cool guy. He's a very, very smart young man. I'm very impressed with him. And I went on his show. And yes, you can check that out on SWMX. That's what they call it. That's the channel. Okay. This is when Paul for Walsh experience. You can go and see what he's up to. Uh, Leanne, is there someone willing you to... You, oh, you had someone willing to take you to the Maldives. How did you fuck that up? Yeah, he <laughs> fucked it up. Don't worry. <laughs> he, he did that royally all by himself. All right. Okay. <laughs> Surely if the guys on board have peg legs and parrots, it's pretty easy to tell if they're parrots. <laughs> I am... I'm Long John Silver, and this is me wife, Catherine. Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. Nice impersonation of the engine, says Rachel. You did a very good job with the engine. How did it go again? <laughs> when you pull the string. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've got an island for a holiday. We've we've given uh, family advice to the Kardashians. We've got no cell phone zones in um, Pumalanga. Yeah, which are the best. Yeah. I mean, how much more do you want from a show? Oh, wait, Robin Wheeler. Yes. So Robin Wheeler, who coined the phrase of being yourself for a living all those years ago, has steadily built the B Entrepreneur. It's B-E-B -E with the E also for Entrepreneur. B Entrepreneuring brand, which ushers people and companies into the emerging way using a visionary integration of book publishing, management consulting, and movie making. It's been a while since we last had him on the show. He was here in August 2021. And what I'm interested in is that he decided out of the blue on his 55th birthday that he was going to just change his whole life, everything, throw it all in the air and just start anew. Look, COVID gave a lot of people that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, were forced to definitely. change. So mm -hmm. he made a, a, a bunch of really big decisions in his life. And he shifted his, his world into a different gear. He sold his house, sorted through his ancestral home, came full circle in a journey that he has led for 28 years and realized his lifelong dream. So if that doesn't sound to you like something worth paying attention to, then I don't know. All right. He's written this book called Love is the Key to Finding Your Voice. There it is. There's Robin Sharma. I don't know if he should have gone shirtless on his own book cover, but <laughs> just my opinion. How to Live Your Myth. No, hmm. this is his new thing. But I, I want to hear about this. He, he, this guy is interesting. He says, love speaks to the soul, stirring, soothing, and sparking you to actualize your inner knowing by being yourself for a living. <laughs> it is very sort of inward looking, right? Very Eastern philosophy. Mm. You know, so we'll find, bring him in. Bring that Robin, bring that. Robin, come and sit down here. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Robin Wheeler? Grab a seat here. Nice. To, well, actually, sit there where Ryan. We can get rid of Ryan. We've had enough of him anyway. He's off to Ireland. <laughs> thanks, Ryan. Thanks for warming up. How, how, how are you? How are you doing? I'm excellent, thanks. And I'm even yeah. better for being here. Now, nice to see you. You took a little run through our parking lot. Yeah. Listen, you're tanned and looking very relaxed. Yeah. Where do you live now? Between Thailand, Phuket, and Irene, which is where I've just come from God now. damn. So Phuket, and forget about Irene for a second. Phuket and Thailand. Yeah. Which island is that? <laughs> Phuket and Thailand. That's fantastic. Yeah. So the dream was to kind of live there, but um, I took over my ancestral home a couple of years ago. And that's, that's what my, here. my new book's about. Yeah, so right. it's, it's 
Irene is the sort of spiritual home and then right. Thailand is the dream home. Well, they, they both dreams come true, really. It's the ideal life. So you decided, I mean, you had a very successful business going here. You, you'd written all these books. You were helping other people to discover meaning and purpose in their lives. Yes. And you just threw it all up in the air and decided, hell no, I'm going to change everything. Not At really. the age of what, 55? I'm 55 now. Okay. So yeah, what sort of happened, it was a hero's journey. If you know the kind of gist of hero's journeys, you start off with where you were, your comfort zone, yeah. which was actually quite a stuck place. Um, I was living in Bedford View. and Oh, well, uh, that's very stuck. <laughs> already. <laughs> Bedford View. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's not go into that one. And um, yeah, I just, I was living at the house. I needed to sell my house. I'd written like... 30 books uh, in sort of 15 years and uh, I just was feeling very stuck in my house and, and Thailand was the dream and then my mm -hmm. ancestral home um, which my uncle had been looking after since my grandparents died in the early 90s so for 30 years or so my mm -hmm. uncle had been living there uh, that became available my uncle died and needed the family needed me to take over the house which had been a dream because when I was a child I used to walk around this piece of land. It's a beautiful piece of land in Irene. And I had this kind of knowing, this intuitive knowing of what I would become in my life. And I traveled this long journey sort of back to myself. And when the house became available, it was on the one hand, a dream come true. On the other hand, a huge responsibility. And my uncle who sort of was eight. And was it still like it was when your grandparents had it? It was untouched. Huh. Mm. And, what did this uncle do? Just lie around? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was he was quite reclusive. He was a bit of a um, sort of mad scientist type engineer. And huh? uh, so he'd let the place just overgrow. So I cleared 100 trucks of garden refuse mm. from there. What, did he just let it become like the secret garden and that uh, mm. Francis H Hodgson Burnett mm. story? Something like, you couldn't see the house from the road. You couldn't, you couldn't see the, road see from the, the house. house. <laughs> Wow. So, but the house. What did he live like? A like a hermit in the yeah, in, the, in this house. He was like that. There were parts of the garden that's an acre. You you couldn't had no one had walked there for a, for thirty years. So, um, it was this huge spiritual thing to go in there. Some of the things were exactly as I'd remembered them as a child, uh, and then other things obviously were his um, sort of he personalized them. So it was this huge return to my intuition to my. Um, the responsibility of of making right what was there was hmm. Gareth there was shit in the garage roof from 1952 because I moved in there in 53. What did you find that was uh, that blew you away? Yeah, sure. that, that excites me to, to mm. go and explore a like house that hasn't been touched in 30, 40 years. Well, I've I filmed it all and took photographs of it. I'm busy making a movie of it to go with a new book. Mm -hmm. But I found my grandfather's engineering notes. I found mm. my father's um, accounting. Uh, notes from university. Uh, I grabbed all of that shit. <laughs> 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 Who wants the accounting notes? Yeah, well, you know, I, I sifted through everything because you can't just, you know, throw everything away. I had yeah. uh, cine movies my grandfather made of his kids, in other words, my father in 1940 oh, in that's Pretoria. Cool. That's very cool. And so he was an engineer, but he had an unfulfilled side of him. I'm getting passionate here and bumping the it's mic. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you have it a lot. Yeah. Um, he was an engineer who'd, who'd, you know, put his kids through school and, and paid off his house. And but he, there was a creative side to him that had gone unexpressed. And when I started out uh, 28 years ago in 1996, it was his unfulfilled legacy that kind of informed me. But this becoming is a, writer. this is not necessarily the responsibility that you wanted, but it was thrust upon you anyway. So yeah. now you have to sort out this mess of a house and garden. You find all this stuff that is actually bound up in your identity. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it must have been an incredible experience. It was incredible. Through. And this is what my book's about, is that we've all got baggage. And um, when, you, when you inherit something, you inherit your ancestral uh, blueprint. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's both sides. You, you, there's amazing legacy in there. There's amazing power and potential. But then there's amazing uh, baggage. And you've got mm. to clear it on your own behalf and on behalf of everybody retroactively so i'm well, no wonder you wanted to flee to thailand and phuket well it became a goal to go so i, I cleared the house and I, it was absolutely invigorating to do the things i discovered each sort of clearing just brought light you know mm -hmm. so that's what the book really helps people do is go through that process of clearing your own personal baggage aligning with your ancestral heritage both 
dark and light mm -hmm. and then creating the life that you've always wanted from there. And it's, it's a sort of um, internal dialogue, a sort of narrative of what I went through. And, and you've called it love. Yes. So I assume there is also more love in your life now. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing, Gareth, How because I didn't like decide what I was going to write and then write it. I started writing and the story told itself. And only mm -hmm. now, even in the marketing, um, now that I've entered into the campaign and you guys are, are the first on the list here this year of, of Good people stuff. I'm speaking to. Yeah, you've always been ahead of the curve, Gareth. Um, it's only now really that I'm starting to fully understand the depth of what this artistic project is. So um, this love is, you know, it's what do what you love, um, love your life. Um, but the love that comes from your ancestry, you know, the, the amount of um, power that's in everybody's triumph day by day over those years. You know, most of us don't, we've never met people older than our grandparents. We don't know our great grandparents, but we living every day that they went through and did what we're doing every day, which is face our life. Make yeah, I mean, we, we live in a country where the ancestors are a particularly important part of everyone's heritage. Absolutely. But the, the scary thing about the ancestors is that most people don't actually know the first thing about them. They just assume that there's this bunch of people who you descend from and that they must in some spiritual form still have an interest in you. Yeah. But it would be more helpful if you knew their name, what they did, what they looked like, where they lived. So I've got that. You know? and I've got an unusually detailed history in that my grandparents were all very archivist Mm. And a bit so you got a lot of info to sift through still. I'm sure you're still busy with it, right? Still, but by writing about it, I'm writing on a universal level about everybody doing the same. So the gift that I've got of all the details, you know, maybe somebody doesn't have all their ancestral information, but it's all built into your DNA and your psychological memory, you know. Mm. So as you unpack that and as you let it out, um, one of the things that comes up in the book quite a lot and, and something I've worked with over the years is, is this thing, as you say, of, of in, in Southern Africa particularly, um, if, if somebody's um, unwell, they'll go and see a Sangoma and the Sangoma will say, your ancestors are unhappy with what you're doing and they want you to yeah. do this. Come into alignment. Now, we of European descent say, don't have such an immediate handle on our ancestry, but it's just as alive. And to cut the long story short, I mean, I'll have a whiskey in the evening after a day's work and I'll walk out onto that lawn. And my grandparents are alive now through me. Uh, that's as clear as I can be about it. It's not abstract. Mm. I can feel it's like a fucking quickening, you know. That, well, uh, this, the, the spark. <laughs> no, you're right. The spark of life, is, this is the most amazing thing, is that that spark of life is passed on from one generation to the next. We're not immortal, but... Our DNA is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but to, to be a living, to actually experience that. So like my grandfather was an engineer. He was a very creative man. Richard Wheeler. The plans for the house say new residence for R. Wheeler, 1953. He designed it. He drew right. it. R. Wheeler, 70 years later, was Robin. That man had no idea that his firstborn grandson would be the one unpacking that roof Right. In the garage. He'd put all that stuff in. Yeah, because they moved into their new house and said, what do we do with all this shit? Let's put it in the roof. Yeah. And then they died. You know, the time just flies. Mm. And I went in there with, as the writer that my grandfather wanted to be, because in his retirement years, he started writing and he got yeah. published that way. And I was 27 when I set out. And it was like, I can't compromise. I can't um, wait until I retire. I had to go for it. And so I'm living my grandfather's unlived life. And my grandmother was a legend in Irene. She taught it at the primary school there for 20 years. She taught Smuts's great-grandchildren, the funder Right, family. Irene's named after Irene, who was the the, the, the wife of uh, Jan Smuts. No, no, she, no? the daughter of Nalmapius, which is the one. Oh, is, that's yeah. some family thing. Yes, <laughs> but it's, it's all, Irene's a place of meaning and community. That's right, the wife was Izzy. Yeah. Izzy Smuts. Okay. Uh, Isabel Isi. Yeah. So, uh, Omar Izzy. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten exactly how you say it, yeah. It's coming back to you there, Gareth. Well, you yeah. are from Pretoria. Uh, you know. <laughs> Irene, Irene is a great neighborhood. <laughs> it's really <clears throat> special. So, yeah. Azalea says here, you know, you're good at, at, at also helping other people to find their voice. So yes. Azalea says, what if my family are a bunch of cunts? <laughs> well, then you've got work to do. <laughs> um, and I suppose we can all relate to that too. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, what if you really don't want to remember them? <laughs> 
That's the greatest uh, question. Is that spelled with a K-A? Uh, <laughs> it's just so good. That's such a great question. Uh, could they find the uncle's body in the mess? I mean, listen, this uncle, I can't believe. How long did he live in this house? Well, he grew up there and then he moved out. And then when my grandfather died and my grand was frail, he moved back in there in the late 80s. And yeah. then he stayed there until the early 20s. And so like just didn't years. do anything in the garden. Well, he was, a, he was a mechanic. He was an engineer. So if the roof leaked, like there are no roof leaks in the house. Mm. Well, that's, thank goodness for that. But aesthetically speaking, um, you know what mechanics are like. You know, Very practical. You, yeah. you get a spare thing, sure. you put it on a windowsill and 40 years later, because you could have used it. You might yeah. have needed it. <laughs> you might it. need it. Well, no one fucking needed it. <laughs> but the family needed a clear out. And that's, I'm sort of born for that. You know, if, mm. if things are messy, I just got this deep urge. So it's like living out who I've been called to. I think this is fascinating. It's also, it's inevitably a, a next stage of development for you because yes. you, you know we've we've seen through your books and in fact there are a couple of them even on this on the shelf here um, from the last time you came to visit us. There's so many things that we all go through in every stage of development. However, you choose where those borders are. It's difficult to sometimes define. Yes, you learn things and you hope to be able to help other people to smooth the path when yes. they get to that point. People and companies, because again, like I was saying, Leanne, this this love is the key to finding your voice. Um, another product of mine is um, a fully booked process. I take companies through a change process and get them to write a book together. And mm. that's, I've suddenly realized uh, with this book coming out that I help companies find their voice. Oh, I'd hate to read a company's book. <laughs> no, one of mine is good. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean a company. Can you imagine a company writing a book? But it's for them it's as well. AI generating an image. I mean, it's it's like your Gareth Pitt books to me are like my, you know, I often thought I'd have children and that my grandchildren would be able to see Read what the people story said about you. me. Yeah. <laughs> but that didn't happen. Um, no one's no one's cleaning up my garage. <laughs> well, you never know. Just try and keep it tidy. Huh? Keep it tidy. Yeah. But you know, the, we're all on the journey one way or the other, I find. And this whole change that we're going through in the world is like i realized it's about clearing out yeah um, definitely not not just uh, haphazardly but systematically and consciously mm. and then deciding what needs to go and why and what you keep and why and, and then the other thing is to create so so congo chris says record keeping is so important i mm. have my grands kissed i thought we should bring that tradition back when a lady gets married she has her family records and photos puts them in a kist and they pass them down that was a thing that used to happen yeah yeah i got three kists ah. sold the one kept one it's got my grandfather's engineering stuff in it the other one's got all of his car records and it's got r wheeler painted on it in his careful but when you paints. okay but you got to be careful in these situations not to be a hoarder yeah. You can keep a whole lot of stuff. I mean, his car records, do you really want those? Yeah. And, and you need those? I don't need them. I don't think no. they're of yeah, value. Just throw those in the bin. Probably. Except Get rid of those. Which, I'll, come, I'll come and, what's it, uh, Marie Kondo. <laughs> I'll come and condo you, your house for you. I'll, I'll help you throw a whole lot of stuff cool. away. The stuff I mean, I it's, done. The yeah. family stuff is, is fascinating and interesting, but a lot of people gather things through their lives and nobody's ever going to look at it. Yeah. Right? I even think sometimes what's going to happen to this yeah. if I suddenly drop dead? Yeah. No one's going to be interested in this. They'll burn it. Yeah. And that, that, that awareness is what matters because if you're mindful and you're conscious, then everything has a place and things that don't, you can move them on, you know, because people hoard for all the wrong reasons. Mm. It's, it's a, it's a, and that's, a, it's mirrored. It's a psychological uh, hoarding that's mirrored around them. And we, if you're able to clear, if you've got the courage to go into life and clear things, then li then new life comes. Yeah, yeah you can't, if, if the glass is already full, you can't wow. pour more uh, interesting liquid into it. So right. back to what you said, I mean, I've come full circle on my journey and it's like I've, I've been born again into, onto a whole new level. I mean, right, I'm, don't start with your boy, born again stuff. You're going to start out. to call Ray McCauley in here just now. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I was born on the next level because it was like, gotcha. Um, gotcha. Um, you know, this thing of being yourself has been my brand for 28 years, but I'm only really discovering who I am on a new level. And this thing of finding my voice, I've had a voice. I've been on your show four or five yeah. times, but I'm finding my voice on this level of where everything comes together. And it's like who you really are comes through because you clean. Well, don't you think, I mean, this is an old thing. I've said this before. Mm -hmm. um, you are half nature and half nurture 
And we all pay attention to the nurture part because we go, well, we were raised by parents who cared about us. We had resources. We went to X and Y school. We had friends. We had influences. We had, we learned certain things, but that's all on the nurture side. Yeah. What you're talking about now is the other half yes. of the equation, which most people just walk blindly through life completely ignorant of. And that is where you come from, yes. what's in the genes, Who stuff you? you have no say over, yes. stuff that is impossible to change. Yeah. It's there whether you like it or not, right? And both sides of it. Yeah, the good and the bad. The good and the bad, the light and the shadow. And, and also, like it's like you've got a personal calling. It's like a, in the book, I talk about it as an inner myth. It's like you're born with this knowing of what you need to do in life. But then you're also born into the context of your family. Um, and that that is equally important uh, and you somehow have to integrate all of those things. And when you get it right, which is what this book's all about, me doing and the reader doing for themselves, um, those things come into alignment. And then it's like it's like a spiritual well, you're, you're force. Try and get them into alignment. Yeah, you're working That's on that. That's a bit that of a challenge time. for some people as well. We're hurting right? cats. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough because you might not be happy with your family history. Yes. You might not be thrilled that you come from a long line of rapists and pirates yeah. you know well we all do you yeah know? and well, i think that's of course we're here the, realization. The, the, the ones that we raped and stole from are not here anymore <laughs> so yes you are the product of uh, probably quite vicious people having mating many over many generations <laughs> yeah many apes mating over many generations to the, produce the survival us. of the shittest yeah <laughs> um and, and and being able to embrace that because yeah. another factor you didn't mention but was implied in what you were saying there is that society doesn't encourage you to be yourself. Uh, it, it encourages you to just follow the nurturing thing, fit into the outside. Yeah. Yeah. But if you just do that, you, you're going to have massive problems in life, you know. Um, but if you only just follow your own truth, you're going to have massive problems. So it's really about finding your own way, using your own intelligence. I like it. I think it's a, a good topic for discussion. So how long is this book? Because you've written short ones and long books. This is a big one. It's a quite a fat book, that. It's Let me see that. How many pages are we talking Before I get stuck into a project for this. 300. 400 pages, 100,000 words. 400 pages. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to just breathe deeply if I'm going to climb into this. But well done, Robin. I Thanks mean, it's so nice much. to see also that, you know, the 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 personal improvement journey, the the getting to know yourself journey, never ends mm. if you do it right it, it should keep going up like a gradient of one you know it's that sort of ideal it's it's an idealistic thing that i've always intuitively known but i knew walking that land that i would one day do what i'm doing now it wasn't a literal knowing it was a feeling and we're all on that quest to stay in alignment with that feeling and like do the work of it but the work is joy you know, if you don't do it, you're fucked. So you have to find your way to it. <laughs> and if being an artistic fucked. person, um, oh. you know, is, is, is a curse if you don't voice it. There we go, voice. Yeah. yeah. So it's, love it. and that voice of yours is not one thing. It's not, okay, yes, here I am using my voice on you your also, show. You also, you've, you've written all those uh, sex books too. You wrote The Sexier Insights, Death is the Ultimate Orgasm. <laughs> you still big on the sex thing? Shit, I hadn't seen that theme. Are you oh, making there's a me sex think theme that? going on with you. I'm a Scorpio. You dirty old man. <laughs> That's what I am. <laughs> All well, right. No, well done. This is the book. Thanks so much. It is called Love is the Key to Finding Your Voice. It is the new Robin Wheeler book, How to Live Your Myth. And uh, full of interesting insights, I'm absolutely sure. Every paragraph will grab you and shake you up. No, and don't promise that much. <laughs> okay. I mean, here's this one about breaking the ice. Gifts break the ice. I, I don't know if this is going to change my life, but maybe it will. I've just got to read on. Okay, I'll take a look. It'll grab you. I'll get into this. Yeah. Robin Wheeler, nice to see you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad you didn't have to fly all the way in from Bali. <laughs> yeah. I would have. No, no, very, very nice. And, and your life, how much time do you spend over there? Well, last year it was, uh, I was in Thailand for three months. And frankly, I'd had enough because that's another point. Uh-huh. South Africa Too much is, of a good thing. Huh? South Africa is great. I heard you had someone mm. moving to Ireland on the yeah. show. Someone who'd been and come back. Yeah. yeah. Um, I fucking love South Africa. I promise mm. you. And I'm not saying that some patriotic mm. thing. Or, it's like, it's where I started being myself for a living. It's where it's all from. And, and our brand here is 
transformational. What we've got to show and teach the world, you, you, only, you cannot buy it, you cannot steal it, you cannot bribe it, you have to live it. And the South African it's Bradham. A, it's an authentic place. It's an authentic yeah. place. And right. it, it's spirited. And right. the myth that I talk about in there is a collective thing here. We're a global player with a voice that everybody needs to use and hear to find their own voice. Right. So I'm so happy Beautiful. to be here. So I'm spreading it out. Very good. Me. There we go. Robin Wheeler, thank you very much. Leanne Moll, thank you very much. Thank you. And we will see you tomorrow. Thank 6 you. 6 a.m. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.